Hello my friends, uh, from today we are going to talk about the Nest.js which is Node.js framework. So first thing we are going to do is uh, I'm going to make an introduction to Nest.js like the what is Nest.js and the philosophy of Nest.js or how to start the Nest.js application and then uh, we are going to learn the basic in Nest.js uh, there are a lot of things we need to learn first for Nest.js like service and provider and controller and so many things so first we are going to look at that and then we will use it for the CRUD application so we will know how to use Nest.js practically but at the time we are not going to use the database the real database so we will just use the local memory for uh, storing our data but after this, we are going to use the Postgres and the type ORM. So we will connect it to our application. After that, we are going to add the authentication feature. So we are going to use the JWT module and the Passport module. Uh, and then we are going to add the permission uh, to our application. So, so only the login user can create the data to the database or the delete something in database and even in here we are going to use the passport and jwp module as we did for the authentication feature uh, lastly we are going to leave the logs uh, so when we uh, leave a log in the express.js we use the winston module but when we use the nest.js there is a built-in feature we can use right away by importing the logger class so i hope this lecture will be really useful for anyone who are going to watch this video. Yeah, from next video, we are going to uh, talk about what is Nest.js. So thank you for watching this video and see you later. Uh, hello, my friends. Uh, today we are going to talk about what is Nest.js. Nest.js is a framework for uh, Node.js and server-side application. Uh, it uses a progressive JavaScript is built with TypeScript. Uh, we only use the TypeScript, not just JavaScript. I think this is quite good. And how is Nest.js structured in internally? And internally, Nest uses a powerful HTTP server framework like Express. So after like making the applications with Nest.js, you will quite realize uh, it is so similar to how we use the Express.js for our application and can optionally be configured to use the testify and this provide a level of abstraction on top of this common Nest.js framework but expose the API directly to developer and if we will look at this part the philosophy of Nest.js there are many great libraries and helper and tools for Node Node.js, but none of them efficiently serve the main problem of the architecture. Nest provides an out-of-the-box application architecture that enables developer and teams to create highly testable, scalable, loosely coupled, and easy to maintain application. This architecture is heavily inspired by Arc Angular. So I actually I never used the Angular, but if I try to find something related to Nest.js, actually, I can get some answer from the Angular community because they uh, use the similar architecture like the service or the provider. So I got some answers from Angular. Anyway, like uh, this course is really based on the Nest.js official documentation because their documentation is really awesome. I think it's just, it is quite okay for just uh, what is Nest.js so far. So in our next video, we are going to install the Nest at, at Node.js. So thank you for watching this video and see you later. Hello, my friend. Actually, we need the Node.js in our computer for the Nest.js because the because the Nest.js is Node.js the framework. So basically, we need Node.js. Uh, it is really easy to install the Node.js. So for that, we can just go to Node.js website. And this one is the latest version, but I recommend you to use the 
like a recommended version like this one you can just click this one and then you can just click the save and and you can just open the installer but i already installed them so i i don't need to keep going for that but after finishing this installations if you want to know this node.js is installed really well in our computer you can just turn on the terminal first and then you can just type node node the v uh, in here you can see the version of the node.js installed in our machine so yeah it is quite easy to yeah, install Node.js and uh, later we are going to install the Node.js GLI2 so see you later hello my friend uh, today we are going to installing Node.js GLI like client Node.js client uh, getting started with uh, Node.js with the Node.js GLI so uh, when starting a project using Node.js uh, we can simply start a project using the Node.js GLI so if you look at here, so if you write the following command using nest GLI, like this one, uh, following command, this one, that's the new project name. So a new project directory is created and populated with the initial core nest.js file and supporting module to create the existing base structure of the projects. So we can just the first uh, install the nest.js GLI by typing npm i global nest.js gli and by using this one we can create our first nest.js application by typing this one so first uh, turn on the terminal we can type the npm i g nest.js gli so if you got this uh, permission denied uh, we are trying to uh, install the nest.js GLI globally so we actually need the sudo permission so I'm going to type sudo first and then npm ig uh, nest.js GLI again and we can type the pass password here after inserting the nest.js GLI so by using the nest.js GLI we can start our application of nest.js application by type the nest uh, this uh, indicate we are using nest.js gli and the new uh, we are going to make the new project and we can type the uh, directory name for our nest.js NES, NES application but first uh, we need to go to the directory for this nest.js application so first i'm going to uh, desktop and in here I'm going to make that application so nest new and just so we can give any name for this nest.js applications directory so for me just nest.js app so like we need to choose which package manager would you love to use so for me uh, I like just npm just uh, it's so simple so I'm just a uh, click this one or uh, if you want to use the yarn yeah definitely you can choose the yarn package manager for this application now we created our first nest.js project so uh, I'm going to turn on the, the visual studio core and then I drag and put the nest.js app we just created so this files and the folder and this is a structure that's the shell I created for us the for the nest.js application so in this structure we uh, install the nest.js gli and by using nest.js gli we created our first uh, nest.js project so from our next lecture we are going to know about the basics in nest.js so thank you for watching this video and see you later hello my friend in this video uh, we are going to make an uh, introduction to a CRGD application that we are going to make. Uh, this is the application we are going to make. And this is one board. Uh, inside this board, there is a title and the description, and there is a status of this board. And there are two status. The first one is the public, the other one is the private. It is really simple application. So to make this application, 
by using the Nest.js uh, things to use in Nest.js when building this app like just, this is for just app structure uh, since we are the creating a board a board application so we need a module for board named board module and an authentication module uh, named us module we are going to make a board uh, application so we need to have a board module to make the board feature and we also need the authentication module to make the authentication feature because only logged in user can make the board so we need two modules if we need to make more feature we will probably have more modules inside this M module uh, so this is the just a uh, uh, structure we are going to make in this uh, course but first uh, we need to make this board module and if you look at here there are more components like the controller and entity and service and repository and validation pipe so in this second section just we are going to learn one by one like uh, first we are going to learn the controller and we will make the controller after that and then we will make the service after we learn the service so after finishing this part and we are going to make this us module part and then we can just uh, connect two of them together so this is for the introduction to CRUD application so from next videos we are going to really start this project so thank you for watching this video and see you later hello my friends uh, so we are going to use the nest.js shell i again for starting our project so um, first we need to uh, go to the directory where we want to create our project so i'm going to turn on the terminal here uh, i want to uh, create my project inside this desktop directory so in here i can just uh, type the nest new and the uh, name of the project we are going to make uh, for me i'm going to type nest or uh, board because the, we are going to make the board application so that's why i name it nest board app so if i enter so i'm going to use the npm for the package manager so now we created the nest.js applications by the nest.js cli so i'm going to turn on the uh, text editor so i'm going to direct the folder we just made in here so if we come in here so there is a way we can run this application so that is the npm start dev this is a defined in package.json so if we come in here if we come to the package.json file so inside this script there is a star script so that's the star so if and uh, there is also star the dev script this one is for the starting the development server for the nest.js application so if i try to start this application npm run start dev so we need to go to the port 3000 so like local host 3000 so you can see this hello world so now we want to see the basic structures or explanation so what this file is and what this file is like the first the uh, es lint rc like uh, like if you look at here a library that helps developer write clean code with specific rules suggesting guideline for using typescript notifying you when there is an error in syntax so when we are using the typescript so we make some error we make some syntax error in typescript so when we make that error this one notify us uh, that is the error so we need to change that syntax for the typescript mm, that is the what this ESLint RC file does and there is also a prettier RC so if we come in here so it is mainly used to, to format the code whether to use the single quote or a double quote 
So this one, the prettier RC, you can see the single quote true. So that means we are going to use a single quote. So this one is the for the uh, formatting, like uh, quite similar, the ESLint RC and the prettier RC, but it is actually different. The this one is mainly for the code formatting. This one is for the syntax error. So you can see like that. And uh, there is also a nest CLI JSON file. So this one is a uh, JSON file with specific setting for the nest nest project. So and then there is also TS config JSON. So TS config JSON TypeScript needs to be uh, confined first into the JavaScript so we can use it. This is the uh, configuration for the compiling and the tsconfig.build.json is this one so we want to exclude when we compile the TypeScript source because the, we don't need to compile this node modules or task and this folder and like this is also for the testing so this is an extension of tsconfig.json so TS configuration is for the compiling so this one is the extension uh, of this TS configuration so the resource package.json I assume you already know the package.json file and there is also SRC folder uh, this is the place where most of the business logic goes so there is a main .ts inside this uh, SRC folder this main.ts uh, this one is entry point so first we need to look at this part like uh, we create the application and then we run our application 3000 port so so that's why this one is the entry point for this application so now we just started our project and then we renew uh, the basic structure for initial the nest.js source code so so in our next video, we are going to talk about Nest.js logic flow. So thank you for watching this video and see you later. Uh, hello, my friend. Uh, today we are going to talk about Nest.js logic flow. So in our last video, uh, when we turn on the, our application, we got this hello world task. So that means uh, when we uh, made a request to Nest.js to our Nest.js application. Uh, Nest.js got that request from the browser and then try to deal with that request and then get the response back to browser. Uh, that response was the hello world task. That's why we can see this hello world text. So if we see here, uh, in here, uh, there was a client and then client made a request to the like on uh, nest.js application uh, in nest.js application the controller part get the request first and then we can actually uh, take care of this request inside the controller but this controller give this request to the service part inside the service part uh, there is a return part then this is like when we get the request from the client and that method was get and then end the point for the request is like just a loot like here localhost 3000 loot uh, if we get the request uh, with this end point and get HTTP method get HTTP method we will uh, just uh, return this hello world text back to the client so first we got the request inside the controller and we try to deal with that request inside the service and then we uh, return it to the controller and then we also get the response back to client so we got uh, this hello world task back this is the uh, nest.js logic flow so it, it is actually really similar to the express.js like if we see here like inside the Express.js, uh, we usually make the controller part like, uh, but the controller part is like 
just a service part in the Nest.js app. So when we make a request related to a user, uh, we try to route that user request to user part. And then if that is the, about the authentication, we send that us request to the us part. And if that is about the board, yeah, we need to send that to the board part. But in Nest.js, this router part is like controller. But in Express.js, like the controller part is like the service part in Nest.js. It is, uh, the place is different, like place name is different, but the, uh, how they work is really similar, like the Nest.js and Express.js. They are just a, uh, trying to route request based on what that request is doing. So yes, this is how Nest.js uh, deal with the request and take care of the request. So in our next video, we are going to talk about uh, Nest.js module. So module is so important in Nest.js. So thank you for watching this video and see you later. Hello, my friend. Today we are going to talk about what is a Nest.js module. A module is so important in Nest.js, and it is actually essential, especially this M module. So inside this M module, uh, which is so necessary, uh, there are board module and os module. Uh, this module is for the board feature, and this one is for authentication. And inside the module, we need to have controller and service, and entity and repository. So first we need to talk about this module right now. So first we are going to look at the definition of Nest.js module. So module is a class annotated with the module decorator. The module decorator provides the metadata Nest.js uses to construct the application structure. And each application has one or more modules the room module is the entry point used by Nest.js. So that means uh, if Nest.js got the request from the client, yeah, this room module becomes an uh, entry point for that request. And you can see this picture, that application module, this is a room module, and inside that, and there is a user module, order module, or champ module. So modules are an effective way to organize component into a set of closely related function. And items corresponding to the same function are used by putting them in one module further. And modules are essentially single tones, so you can easily share the same instance of a provider between multiple modules. So like this share module so we can use this one user module uh, order module and temp module so now we talked about the uh, nest.js module so in our next video we are going to really the create the bold module first so thank you for watching this video and see you later hello my friend uh, today we are going to create bold module uh, in our last video, what is Nest.js module? So it's time to create board module for the uh, board uh, feature. So we are going to make the board application. So inside the app module, which is a root module, we need to have a board module for uh, creating a board and updating a board like that. So first, uh, we need to organize the files to create from scratch because the, we got the uh, initial structures that are made by the uh, Nest.js GLI, like uh, we type the Nest.js new uh, project name, so we got the initial structure. So if we see the our project here, like this one is the initial structure for the Nest.js. So we want to start from the scratch. So there are some files and we need to delete. So inside this M module, uh, we are going to just delete this part, controller and provider. We are going to make that controller and provider later, so that's why we are deleting them. So we also need to delete the import part for the app controller and service. And we also need to delete this app controller. 
delete it and controller spec and uh, app service and, and we can also delete this test folder so now we only have app modules and this main ts so this one is the entry point for the nest.js application so come back to diagram so now we only need to have this app module and main ts inside the src folder and now we can create a module so board module so when we create a module we are going to use the nest.js cli so uh, this is the command lines we can use for creating a board module so nest is for the using nest cli we are indicating this part and g is for the generate and module is for the schematic that i want to create the board is the name of the schematic so come to our text editor here and we turn the uh, terminal inside in here and we type nest and g generate and module we are going to create the module so and then board uh, is the name for this module so if i type enter and uh, we got these two lines so create the module file and then update something so we come in here now we got the boards folder we didn't have this folder before but after typing this uh, command lines so we got this board file and then board module file folder and file so and then uh, we got this update date line this one is for this m module file so we actually didn't get any like the module in here but automatically this one appears after we type this one uh, this means the first uh, uh, this nest.js cli automatically uh, create this folder boards folder and then board module file here and then trying to use this board module uh, in this application, we just uh, put this border module inside the M module because the M module is a root module. So we just uh, put this border module inside this M module. Like to use the border module, uh, you just create it. It must be registered in the root module app that module that ts. This is automatically registers when creating a board module. So like that so make sure it runs well like our application runs well if you want to make sure it npm run start dev like so we didn't get any error from this this nest.js application so we got that a board module installed really well so thank you for watching this video and see you later Hello my friend, today we are going to talk about what is a Nest.js controller. So controller is just really important in Nest.js. So first we need to know the controller. So controller processes the incoming request and returns a response to the client. So if we get the request, HTTP request from the client side, controller that get request. And then after deleting that request, we this controller returns a response to the client and we can just make the controller like this so we first make the controller class like uh, for the board controller we can just type board controller and we also need to put this controller decorator above this class controller so controller is defined by decorating a class with the controller decorator and the decorator takes argument as a path that are processed by the controller so we put this the board path uh, that means if the client uh, makes a request uh, with the path like uh, local host and boards and anything like an item like that so this path needs to be in this part so if we have the different controller like the for authentication so we need to have uh, this decorator controller and then us like that 
uh, in this case, uh, this one's uh, path needs to be changed like us. So this argument uh, is for the path. So, and we also need to know the handler. Uh, handlers are simple methods within controller classes that created with the creator like get and post and delete. So inside of controller, we we are going to have a lot of handlers. This one is a handler, and we can also put more handlers in here. This handler is for the getting boards, like uh, this action returns all boards, but if we want to post, like the create the boards, uh, we need to have, we can just uh, put that uh, post, post to the creator, like post and create board and like we put some logic inside in here like for creating the a board create board like like that so we can put many handlers uh, inside this uh, board controller so if we come in here so if we the review the Next.js logic flow again. So client made the request to the Next.js application, and first the controller get that request. So there are a lot of the controllers like um, user controller, an authentication controller, or board controller. But based on the path of that request, the call is finding the controller get that request, and then. Uh, to deal with that request, uh, we send that request to the service and we try to deal with the request and then send response back to controller and, and again we send that response back to the client from the controller. So this one is a logic flow for the NestJS and then what this controller does inside this NestJS. So thank you for watching this video and in our next video we are going to uh, create the board controller. So see you later. Hello my friends. Today we are going to create board controller. So in our last video we talked about uh, what is the controller. So uh, first we can create the board controller by the NestJS CLI as well. So if we see this uh, command line from the first, uh, Ness is for the using Ness shell. I G is for generate the controller. Uh, is for controller schematic. So we have, we want to create the controller. And then boards is the uh, name of the board. A uh, name of the controller. The dash dash no spec is for we are not going to create the file for those um, testing. So first we come to our text editor here and then. We are going to type uh, nest jig uh, generate controller and boards and no specs. So we can see this uh, controller file uh, just uh, automatically created and we come to our module file so automatically this board controller which was automatically created and registered inside this controller. Uh, this module. It is actually almost the same as the process of this uh, creating the module. Uh, when we create the module by NestJS CLI, this, mod this board module was created and then this module also was uh, registered inside the M module. And when we create this uh, board controller, we created this board controller and then this board controller was uh, register inside the board module like in here it is almost same the process so yeah we this board controller was uh, created inside the board folder they automatically this nest.js knows where uh, this board controller needs to be created this one is inside this board folder so the order of the creating a controller when entering the commands with CLI. So CLI finds the boards folder first, board folder first, and create a controller file in, inside a board folder. And here, this board controller.ts, and then find the 
modify in the board folder just uh, find this uh, board module file and just uh, put the controller inside the module file this one just uh, this controller it always needs to be registered inside the module so we can use this controller so this is it for the creating board controller it was really easy because uh, we can use this CLI so easily so in our next video so we are going to know the NestJS provider and service so thank you for watching this video and see you later hello my friend uh, today we need to talk about uh, what is NestJS provider and service uh, first we need to talk about provider and pro provider is a fundamental concept in NestJS most of the base NestJS classes can be treated as provider such as services, uh, repositories, and factories, and helpers. The main idea of a provider is that it can be injected as a dependency. This means that objects can create many different relationships with each other, and most of the ability to connect instances of objects can be delegated to the next runtime system. So in here, what we need to focus is the injected, like a we need to inject the provider into the different module uh, into the different component like so there is a service a service and b service we can use a service and b service in b service inside the controller a so we can inject this service a into the controller a so it is like the importing the another module inside this controller A or this B. So we need to use this injectable decorator to inject this service to the controller. Like the service is also provider, not just this service, but these factories and these repositories. We're also gonna uh, make the repository later and also the helpers. The helpers and repository and factories and service or are the uh, provider so provider can be injected into different like the controller or any other so inside this nest.js uh, we always inject something it's because we want to use that service or the repository inside this any other like component so now we uh, briefly know that what is the provider and inside the provider we knew that there is a service so we also want to know what is a service. A service is a common concept in software develop development. A service is a com common concept in software development and is not a concept used only in NestJS and JavaScript. And it is wrapped with the injectable decorator and provided to the module. And this service instances instance can be used throughout the application. So the service handles tasks such as validating data in the controller or creating items in the database. So here we can see this service. So we want to use this service inside the controller. So we actually need to inject this service into controller. But like there is also a way of how to inject service into controller. That's what we are going to study later. So how to use the service in controller like uh, without doing anything we cannot use the service inside the controller automatically we actually need to do dependency injection uh, as you can see above in controller this app service get hello like this app service app service get hello uh, what we actually did in here is we brought this uh, get hello method uh, defined inside this app service uh, in this uh, controller but how can we just uh, use this uh, get hello method that is in the app service in this controller uh, without doing anything we cannot do like that so we actually need to do the dependency injection that is in this part like inside this constructor we actually uh, do the dependency injection uh, we are actually using the ty TypeScript feature in here. Like we brought this the board service as a type 
and we put this uh, type inside this the property board service and then we use that property like this board service and get board by ID defined in the service so we are using this uh, TypeScript feature uh, the way we can use this uh, private access modifier so uh, we cannot just use the access modifier like uh, in JavaScript the reason why we can use this uh, uh, access modifier is we are using the TypeScript that is the benefit of using TypeScript so we can use the private like this but uh, how we make this line uh, we are going to study uh, next section a uh, next video like this so we are going to how to actually uh, inject the dependency like this so as you can see above the board service is imported the board service is imported this this board service is imported uh, injected from the controller class a uh, constructor class then you are using private syntax in this way we define the board service and made it usable in controller uh, by doing like that this board service is usable inside this controller the reason we can do this is that we can use TypeScript feature to reserve dependencies into types and registering a provider so when we use the a controller or module we always need to register or uh, even for this provider we need to register to use it inside let's say its application to use the provider you need to register it in Next.js before you can use it to register you can do it in the module file just to put the provider you want to use in the module in the provider section of the module file like if we come to our text editor and to see this module file when we want to use the controller we actually need to register it inside this the controller and when we want to use this board module we also register this board module inside this M module like this board module we even for the we are going to create the a service later like uh, in our next video but uh, after creating that service which is the provider we also need to register that service inside this the uh, board module that is like that uh, provider and board service uh, that is what we are going to do in our next video and thank you for watching this video and see you later Oh, hello my friends it's time to create board service well now that we know about the service let's create the board service ourselves uh, in service we will handle database related logic so we will handle logic such as importing data from the database or inserting created board information when creating a board in the database so yeah, even this time when create a board service so we need to use the nest CLI so uh, when we use the command line that is the nest G service boards on uh, no spec so first we come to our text editor here we type the nest G service and boards and no specs so now we created the service and then we updated the board module so first we create the service the board service inside the board folder and then we uh, to use this service uh, we put that uh, board service inside the provider that in the board module uh, and yes if we see this the for the service, the, we use this injectable decorator to use this service in any other module. Uh, so for the service, the, when you create a service using CLI, the for the service TS file is created like this. This generated file, there is an injectable decorator or uh, inject, injectable decorator. Uh, and this Next.js uses it to make this service available to other components. So and when creating a service with CLI, the service is automatically added to the module. So in here, like in the module inside this module, um, this service is automatically added added in here. 
So to use this service, even inside this board controller, so making board service available to board controller, we need to do the dependency injection. Uh, in this, in NestJS, dependency injection is done in the class constructor, like in here. A class constructor, we put this the board service, so we can use this board service inside the board controller. This whole part is for the dependency injection. But there is an order. It's how we can use this line. So first, if you come in here, the order in which the above uh, source code was created. The above code is made possible with the help of TypeScript, access modifier such as a private, uh, such as a private, cannot be used in JavaScript but can be used in TypeScript. So originally this code needs to be like this at the first time. Like uh, we use the constructor, we designate the board service object as a type. This one, we designate board service object as a type in board service parameter. Like this one is board service parameter. And to use this board service parameter uh, in the board class, uh, assign the board service parameter to the this board service property. So this one is the board service pro property. We can use this property inside the board controller. So we just uh, put this board service parameter into this board service provider. Uh, however, uh, we also need to put this board service parameter up here. Like uh, we are defining this uh, property. Like uh, without defining property, we cannot use this property inside the TypeScript. So this one is the parameter. Uh, this one, like this uh, red color is the parameter. And this one is a property, 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 property. So we can use this property like this. So originally this source code is like this, but how can we change this source code into this, into this code? It is much simpler than this one. So the way how to uh, change it like this is that we got the benefit of the TypeScript like we can use the access modifier like private or protected or public in here so if we come in here simplify the source code with access modifier when an access modifier is declared in a constructor parameter like we just uh, declare this private in here, the constructor parameter using the access modifier is implicitly declared as a class property. Like it was uh, uh, without this access modifier, it was a parameter. But after we declare uh, with this uh, access modifier inside the constructor, uh, this parameter implicitly becomes the property so we can just use this property inside this handler and like this dot board service like that so now we created uh, our board service and we knew how to do dependency injection so it could be kind of like confusing but if you keep using this this way you would understand later so thank you for watching this video and see you later Hello my friend, uh, today we are going to create a service to get our boards. Like, uh, we are going to make the CRUD applications. So in CRUD, we are going to do the R part, like reading all the posts, like implement logic to get all boards data from the database. So you can implement this logic in service. We can actually implement this logic uh, directly with the database but we are not going to do with the database right now because I think it can be a little bit confusing if we connect the database from the beginning. So first we want to focus on NestJS basic feature. We are going to do it first without the database. Just we 
boards array and we put all the boards data inside in here inside this local memory not in the real database we will do it later but now we just want to focus on the nest.js feature so we will store the host data like a board data in the boards array and the reason for using private like private here is that if you do not use private other components can assess this board service and modify the value of this board array and so first we go to the text editor and then just uh, put this boards inside the uh, source code so first we need to come to the board service uh, we are going to treat the uh, database related things inside the service so that's why we need to come in here first so private and then boards and array so we are going to put the data like a boards data inside in here and we come in here and we need to make the method get all boards so to get all boards data contained in the board variable you can use the get all boards methods or how do i call this methods when a client sends a request it first gets on the controller and routes the request according to the controller so we will treat it like this this boards we will uh, get all the data that is inside this array so mm -hmm. we can just uh, uh, make the method in here the method name is the get get all boards and then return this board we are returning this uh, property like uh, all the boards data that is in this array so if we return this one that client can get the all the boards data and we want we need to use this method inside the uh, the board controller in here we need to get this one uh, from this controller so how can we get it so like this first uh, we will get the uh, client uh, request in the controller when the controller get that uh, request we need to have HTTP method according to that request and and that pass we also need to get the pass First, we need to go to the controller uh, inside as the board controller here. We need to make the handler to deal with the request that's coming from the uh, client. So, so first there will be the get request and then uh, we need to put the pass. But if that is just a root, we don't need to type it like this. And then this handler's name is a get all all boards return we need to use the uh, board service because the uh, define this method inside the board service but when we use this board service inside this controller uh, we said before we actually need to do the dependency injection so this is time we need to do that dependency injection so dependency injection can be done with this constructor class so we need to put that constructor and private and board service and board service automatically we can Im import it like that to get the constructor body here and then now we can use this board service parameter property so we put it in here and then we can use this get all boards method we define it in in here inside this service so like like we made a, a handler and the method well so now we can actually send the request uh, but we don't have a client right now but we can use the postman for the client like uh, for sending a request to the nest.js application so i'm going to just uh, turn on the postman if you don't have a postman you can just uh, go to postman website and then just uh, download it it's really uh, straightforward
So we can come to the uh, postman and uh, I give the uh, pass uh, localhost 3000 because uh, uh, we are, our application will be running on the port 3000. So it will be localhost 3000 and then the pass will be the forest. So I'm going to run the application first. Dev. So our application is running and then I will just uh, send the request in here so you can see this array, empty array because the uh, our inside our service our array is empty so that's why we get the empty string back. So summary like uh, when a client send a request equals to the first controller first controller first and the controller allows it to the appropriate appropriate request to pass to the handler uh, inside the handler uh, we need to get this handler uh, based on that request uh, after that it goes into the service to handle the request it goes to the service under the request so after that uh, as the service handles the logic for the request and send a return value to the controller after is uh, deleting the request, um, return the value to the controller, and the controller send the result to the client, and then the controller send that result to the client. So the controller is responsible for handling the request and returning the result value. So thank you for watching this video, and in our next video, we will define the board model. Uh, see you later. Hello my friends, today we are going to define the board model. So we are doing the CRUD application and we did the uh, R part like uh, bringing all the board data, like a uh, board data, we try to get that. And now it's time to create board like the C part in CRUD. But before creating that function, like creating board, but we first want to define the uh, property for that board like a board need uh, ID and name and description we actually uh, define them the ID and name and description inside the model part like a uh, so first we need to make the model file the name is the board model TS so uh, and to define the model like uh, we can use the class or interface so if we use the interface, we can only uh, check that type of the variable. But if we use the class, uh, we can check the type of the variable and we can also create an instance as well. But we just need to uh, check the type of the variable or uh, no need to uh, create the instance. So that's why we are just going to use that interface for that model. So first, in order to de define only the structure of the board, so we will use interface. So create a board model. We need to create a board model file. So and we go to the text editor here, and then we try to make that board model that TS. Uh, inside in this model file, we need to uh, define model for that board so board need the ID and title and description and status this one is for the uh, private or public status ID uh, could be string and title uh, is string and description is string and status uh, first we just uh, put them in our source code so we are going to use the interface for that board and the board ID is a string and title we need the title for that board that would be string and description will be string again and status status needs to be the so like if we come in here uh, distributing whether this post is uh, public or private so and since it cannot come out other than these two states, 
So it only needs to have the public or private. So we will use enumeration as a function of a TypeScript so that only these two states can come out. So we only need these two states. So we are using the TypeScript function uh, that is the enumeration. So we are doing like this. So export enum and board, sta board status and public is public and private is private. We come in here and do it like this. Export enum board status public public and private private and we use this border status in them in here so we can uh, define this status type as a board status so if you put board status defined using enum in status like this you can use only public or private status the board status has put in so now we uh, made that board model so by using the board model we can actually define the type or uh, using the creative board model so define so first we can give the type to the board variable so we made this board variable this array but we can give the type for this board variable creating the service and the value returned by the method even for this method this method return this boards so that means it's array uh, all the board data will be inside in here so when this one returns it will return this board type so we can give the type uh, by using this creative board model and not even in service if we go to the controller we can also use this model to define this type return type so first we go to the service part we go to the service part board service uh, we can actually define this board property we need to use the board model but this board is not object this one is array but this type is just uh, for one object but we need array so we need to put this one like that and even this method also return board and now we go to the controller part uh, this um, this handler also return the uh, board array board array so now yeah we define all the type we can just right now so why is it good to define a type like this so defining the type is optional not essential uh, however since the type is defined like this an error occurs when using a code that is different from the desired type and from the perspective of reading the code it is easier to understand and read the code it's, it can be readable by just uh, defining the type for any variable or function or anything so thank you for watching this video and see you later uh, hello my friend today we are going to create a post this one is for the service part like uh, we actually defined the board model before but now it's time to create a post so create a post creation function so now that we have defined the model for the post we will create a post like a board a creation function to create a function the place that handle logic related to post is a service not controller you can do it in controller too but it's better to do it in service so after handling the logic in service first we will call the service in the controller so first we do it we build with the logic uh, inside the service and we bring the method inside this the controller so first we need to make this source code source code inside the service like that this one is the method named the create board uh, we need the title and description 
uh, we need to get from the client. Client need to type the title for the board and the description for the board. And if that is sent to the uh, NestJS application, uh, first it goes to controller. So when we make this uh, create board method by using this title and description, and we also need to give the status. Uh, status, the uh, default value is the public. Or uh, you can change it into pub or private, but for me, uh, it's better for me to give the default value of public. So I put it like that. Uh, so I made one board to create a board. So if we come in here, uh, inside this uh, service, we need to make the method for creating a, a board. Uh, then name will be create board. And when we create the board, we need to get the title. And title, so type is string and descriptions type is string. Uh, inside this method, we need to make the board object. So board and board type will be board model and we need to make the board uh, object in here so we need to give the title uh, for this uh, property we need to uh, give the real value real value will be title we get from here that client gives and the description will be description but in uh, ES6 JavaScript we can just uh, omit this part if this key and value is same so we need to omit this part too and we also need to give the uh, property status we need to define this one uh, I want it to be the public uh, for the uh, deeper value but if you uh, type that uh, you can get the two options private or public uh, that is because the we give the uh, type board status uh, with the enumeration so it is really good because the only public and and private can be applied in here so we just made the board object we need to put this one we need to add this one inside this uh, array that is easy just uh, you can this board and push it and you can just put this board so you can put this board object into this array and then you can also return board or newly created board you can return it to the client but we got the error in here the reason is that uh, when we define this a board model we also give this ID uh, so we also need to put the ID in here but originally uh, when we uh, use the database our uh, database itself make the ID automatically so we don't need to deal with that but we are not using the database right now we actually need to manually create the ID but this ID need to be unique so we are using the UUID module to make the unique ID. So if we come in here, how do I handle post IDs? ID must be unique for every post, every board. So when you put data into the database, the database automatically gives you a unique value. However, since the database is not currently used, a unique value must be randomly assigned. Or in this case, in this case, you can use several methods, but I will give a unique value using the UUID model. So to use the UUID model, we, we can just install UUID, but it is really easy. Like a type npm install UUID save. So we can come inside the, our text editor, uh, npm install UUID and save. To install the UUID module, now we got that UUID module installed. And then to use it, uh, import v1 as UUID from UUID module. 
So UUID has a lot of version. We are going to use the version 1 of the UUID, but when we use the UUID, the name will be UUID. So we can bring it like that, UUID and UUID. So if we do it like that, the UUID automatically create the unique ID for us. So, so now we make the create board cert method right now. So uh, in our next video, so we will make the controller part for the create board, like because the, we did it for the service part. So we will do it later in our next video. Thank you for watching this video and see you later. Hello my friend, it's time to create board for the controller parts. So if you have a process the logic part, like now like logic part inside this service, now process the request and response part. The request and response part are handled by the controller. How do I get the values to send from the client in the handler? This value is like the body, like the uh, title, title of the board and the description of the board. So if a user type the title and description, we need to get it inside this Nest.js application. So by using the title and description, we can put them inside the database to create that board. So how can we get the value? So when we use the Express.js, we use the body parser module. Uh, even though that is the deprecated right now, so we can just use Express for that or parsing the data, but anyway, so we can just get it like request the body has received the value sent from the client or how to get it from Nest.js. Like we get it like request the body inside the Express.js, but how can you do it inside of Nest.js? So in Nest.js, it is imported using a uh, body decorator. So this way you can get the value sent by or request to get them one by one. So like if we use this like body inside this body, all the all the value like the title and description, all values are inside this body. But if we use it like this, uh, body decorator and specific the uh, property like the title. If we need the title or uh, inside this the title, so that we can get all the title value. If we uh, get all this description of property like inside this uh, description we can get only the description value so you can choose it either way so now we send the value so that the service can process the logic so when the values so when the values sent from the request are received from the controller the service must process the logic using this value so we pass it as a parent so first uh, inside this controller we actually need to send title and description to the service. So in our last video, we uh, got this, when we made this create boards method, we get this title and description. So when we made this board object, we use it, but we actually need to get it from the controller. Controller. So we need to first uh, make this handler to post because that this HTTP method when we create the board we use the post method so this request or uh, handlers name will be uh, create board and we need to get that value like title and description that will be body uh, for title and title string or uh, body description and description string and this one return only board uh, return like this board service uh, create board we already uh, create this method inside this uh, service like uh, we are using this service right now in inside uh, the controller so when we call this uh, method we actually need to give this title this title and description like that so now we finish making this board creation function now we can actually uh, test this 
of function with Postman. So first we are going to the, run our application npm run store dev and then uh, turn on the Postman and we come in here post HTTP request and then uh, pass will be localhost 3000 and then boards and inside its body okay I'm going to give the uh, like title and then title will be uh, board title and then we also need to give description uh, board board description so I'm going to just send it here so uh, this ID is created by the UUID automatically this one is so unique and then title is a border title we give from the client and description and the status the default value is the public so thank you for watching this video and see you later hello my friend today we are going to talk about data transfer object uh, which is DTO like the first we want to know what is a data transfer object uh, an object for exchanging data between layers uh, it is an object used to get data from the DB and send it to service or controller and DTO is an object that defines how data is transmitted over a network it can be defined using an interface or a class however NestJS recommends using class so we briefly know what is the DTO right now so why we need to use the DTO that is so important we need to know why DTO is for efficient in checking data validity and it makes the code more stable it is also used as a type in TypeScript so if you come in here we see the data flow in the NestJS so first the client made a request into client uh, inside the request we put the title and then description for the board we want to make so that title and description will be in here and in here and in here so if we change if we need to change just the one property like we need to put uh, any other property in here so we actually need to put that other a newly created property need to be here and here but if we need three more property we need to uh, put three more property here and here and here uh, actually uh, we are having only controller and service right now but later we also need to uh, create the repository and we need to put more property so it becomes really complicated so this way like we type everything in here can be really messy so that's why we need the DTO DTO can solve this problem so if you look at the flow of data processing in DestJS the properties for the boards are being used in several places title description several places this one this one this one and since we are creating a simple application right now we only need to call a few property and call them in only few places but what if you have uh, so many property use them in many places and suddenly need to change the property name in one place then you have to change the same property everywhere that are used the uh, same in other places this can make your application really hard to maintain in this case you can use DTO to solve this problem so in our next video we are going to create the DTO and apply it to that our application so thank you for watching this video and see you later uh, hello my friend today we are going to create the DTO for creating post so because we learned about DTO in previous lectures in these times we will actually create a DTO for creating a board so to create a DTO file so inside a board folder we make a folder named DTO and inside the DTO folder we create a file named create board DTOTS so we come to our text editor in here uh, inside the board folder uh, make the folder name DTO and then inside DTO folder create board 
dto.ts and if you come in here detail file creation the classes are more useful when taking advantage of features like pipes because they work at runtime differently from the interfaces so i use classes to write details so for detail we can use the class or the interface but the class work at runtime differently from the interfaces so that's why I am using the class for the detail. So we come to our um, create board detail TS. So I'm going to define the export and class uh, create board DTO. So we need the title and string and the description. We will put this detail instead of like if you come in here, like we are just uh, giving this title and description. Like we need to type title and description both even in here. But we put this uh, title and description inside the uh, detail, create board detail. We don't need to put both of them like this. We can just use the DTO in here. So applying DTO, we need to apply DTO so because we just created. So after creating the DTO like this, so we will apply the DTO in the actual controller and service. First, we will apply it to the controller. So we come in here. So we just uh, remove this part and create board dto and we need to give the create board dto we just created so inside this create board dto we can get the title and description both and uh, even in here like we get this property we put it in here but we get the error in here because the this method actually expect two argument but we actually put only one argument right now so we actually need to change this uh, method to we are using title we put two parameter in here but we only have the one parameter right now that is the create board dto and this type is the create bold DTO. So now we get uh, two error again. But inside this create bold DTO parameter, so we can get the title, like the const title and the description create DTO like this. You know, like the const title and create detail title is actually same as this one and even for description by using this structuring syntax we can do it like that so okay so now we finish uh, applying the detail for our service and then controller so thank you for watching this video uh, in our next video we will make feature to get specific post by ID. So see you later. Hello my friends. Today we are going to make a feature to get specific forward by ID. Like uh, when we just uh, get the board, uh, we can get all boards and we can also get specific board by ID or a name or a description. So this time we will get specific board by ID. So we will implement a function to fetch a specific board using ID. So we first uh, make the service and then we will make the controller as we always did. So first inside the service, we can do it like this. We will find the specific board by ID. So we use the find method. So first we go to that service for the service to uh, make that. So for the service in here, we can make it in here. Uh, that name may be, uh, method name may be get board 
by ID and we will get the ID that comes from the client. The client wants to find a specific uh, board by ID, so that ID will be string. And uh, we also need to give the return type will be just the board because the board is will be just one. And inside this board array, we are going to find this one board. We get the one board here, and then board and ID. If that is the same ID we got from the uh, client, that's the one we are looking for. And then we also need to make the controller. Um, so when we make the controller, we need to get the ID, ID param. So that pass will be board and ID. And then when we get that, so like the, this one is like that. So local host to 3000 port and boards. And then the ID is like, like this. We want to find the board that has this ID. So this one is this ID. And then we need to get this board ID. So to get this one, we need to use this param decorator. Uh, when we get the body, we use the body decorator. But this time we need to get this param named ID because we define it here as ID. So to get this param, ID param, so we need to do it like this param. So we pass it in here as an argument. So again, we go to controller part and then make that handler. So in here, yeah, we use the get HTTP method and we also need to give the pass that is the ID and that get port by ID and param and ID ID will be string board the return value will be a uh, written type will be board and this is a board service and we already made this get board by ID method so okay so yeah we finished making this function to get specific board so like in our next video okay we can delete the specific post by id so see you later hello my friend uh today we are going to implement a function to delete a specific board using id so this time we are using the id again to delete it this time well before it was uh trying to find the specific board by id but this time deleting uh, this time again we are going to make first make the service first and then the controller uh, when we uh, delete the specific board uh, we are going to use the filter method so we come to our uh, visual studio code inside the service uh, in here uh, this uh, method's name will be delete board and we get the ID from the client and we are not going to like return anything so this board and this support and filter and we get all the boards in here and board ID is different from this ID by using it like this, so we can actually delete the specific board and we need to get it, get this one uh, from the controller. Inside this controller, we also need the ID again, so pass will be like that. So we need to get that ID uh, by using this param decorator again. So comes in the controller. This one is for the deleting, so we need to use the delete uh, HTTP method and the uh, pass will be the ID, the handler name will be delete board and we need to get it from the param, so the params name will be ID, we define it here and then 
I did and string uh, the return value will be void we are not going to return anything so this board service and did it board and we give the ID as argument so now we finish making the delete function again and thank you for watching this video and see you later thank you uh, hello my friend uh, today we are going to update the task of a specific host so we will implement a function to update the status of a specific board uh, this time again we are going to make the service first and the controller so when we uh, update the board actually we need to get the board data uh, by id because the, we need to update the specific board after getting all the specific board data only we can change status value so like uh, if you see here like uh, by using the get board by id method we will put that id as a argument and we will use this method and then uh, inside this uh, object board object we get the all the specific board's data like the title and description and status and inside the data we can only change the status so we can update the board status and then after making this service and we can also make the controller so first we type this update board status I'll come to our board service so in here update board status id string uh, status uh, status we, we are going to change uh, status we also need to uh, status value uh, which we want to change into like so this one's uh, type is board status so and the return type will be board and then close the board this get board by id we made this method in here like in, in, in here so we need to put the id we get it from the client id we want to uh, update this specific board uh, by using the id so and we got this board data inside in here and we want to change all the status uh, that is the uh, status we get it from here and then we want to return that uh, updated updated the board like this so we made it in service in here and we need to change it in the controller uh, we are using the patch or uh, HTTP method so and then the pass will be we need the ID we get it from the param and then the status we put the status up behind this ID and then we get it the get the ID value from the param and we also need to get the status value but that is not from the param that is from the body so we will also make this controller inside in uh, controller type the patch and the uh, pass will be id and status update board status and param the name is id id type string body status status board status return uh, this board service and update the board status uh, this method take two argument uh, first first argument is the id and second one is status status so it's done for the uh, updating the status of specific post so thank you for watching this video and you can just uh, test this one uh, with the postman so that's better so thank you and see you later hello my friends uh, today we are going to talk about nest.js pipes first we need to know what is pipes 
A pipe is a class annotated with the injectable decorator. Pipes are used for data transformation and data validation. And pipes operate on argument processed by controller route handlers. Uh, Nest injure the pipe just before the method is called and the pipe receive and operates on argument to the method. So if we see this diagram, first the client uh, send the request to the Nest.js application. So you can see the controller here, but between the controller and the client, we put this the pipe here. So inside this pipe, uh, we do two things. The first one is the data transformation. The other one is the data validation. So when we send this uh, post request, uh, inside this request, uh, we put this the title and description. And inside this the pie, so based on the condition we give for the data transformation and data validation, if the arguments are passed by this uh, transformation and data validation condition, uh, it is the passed. So we can just uh, pass this request to the controller, or if there was the failed, uh, we actually need to pass this one into this error part. So that's what pipes does. So if we come in here, these pipes are used for the transformation and data validation. We also need to know what is transformation and the validation. So transformation is the convert input data to desired format. Like for example, like uh, if the input value is a string, we want to change the string into integer. Like if you want to receive a number and it comes in string format, the pipe will automatically convert it to a number, like string to integer. So we actually want the number seven or number six, but that comes as a, a string seven. So we actually want to change this string seven into integer seven. So we also need to know the data validation. Uh, we just need to evaluate the input value and pass it unchanged if valid. Otherwise, a reason exception when the data is invalid. Uh, if the length of the name is less than 10 characters, uh, an error is generated if it is uh, more than 10 characters. So it is like checking the data uh, based on the condition we give. So, and how to use the pipe. So we, we now know what is the pipe. So now it's time to know how to use pipe. So or we can call this one is a uh, binding pipes. Uh, binding pipes can be divided into three types. There are three types of how to bind the pipes. These are handler level pipes and parameter level pipes and global level pipes. Uh, as the name suggests, you can pipe to handler level and parameter level and global level. So first one is the handler level pipe. So if you see this picture, uh, this can be done at the handler level. So this one is a create board is a handler inside the controller. So we put this use pipe above this handler. So this pipe applies to all parameter like a uh, title and description. But there is also parameter level pipes. Uh, because it is a parameter level pipes, a pipe that only apply to certain parameter. Uh, in the case below, the, the parameter of pipe is applied only to title. And there is also the global pipe. So global pipes on application level pipe. So apply, apply to all incoming requests from client. Just put it, put it in main TS, which is the top area. So main TS is actually top area. So if we put this uh, pipe inside in here, so this one, is uh, applied to all incoming requests from client. So there are three pipes level. So, and there are also built-in pipes like already available by default in the CEF. That is the built-in pipes. Uh, you can see this built-in pipes, the validation pipe, and parse into pipe, and parse bool pipe, parse array pipe, and parse UUID pipe, a uh, default value pipe. You can actually guess what each pipe does by looking at their, their name. 
uh, validation parse in to parse pool. So among among them, let's just try only one pi using this parse into pi. If you see this picture, uh, there is a handler, this handler, that should come with a number as a parameter value like that. So we want to get the value, id value, as a number. We need to get the number. Well, if you see here, the client send parameter value as a string, not a number. So when this uh, handler get this ID parameter, we need to give an error. So if we test uh, with this code and with this request, we will get this error. But if we don't have this parse into pipe, we are not going to get any error like this. So that's why we can put this pipe. So now we are going to just uh, put the pipes into our application. So thank you for watching this video and see you later. Hello my friend. Today we will use a pipe to validate the post when creating it. So to, to use a pipe, uh, there are modules we need to download. So that is the class validator and then class transformer. So first to come to the our text editor here and then uh, first type the npm install plus validator. This one is for validation and uh, the other one is the class transformer. This one is for transformation. So okay. Uh like the, there is a documentation page for the uh, validation, the class validator. So there are a lot of decorator, validation decorator we can use. Like is empty, is not empty, is in, so it's not in. So we need to uh, create a pipe first. Currently when creating a board, uh, we don't need to give on any value for the name and description. So uh, here, uh, when we just uh, uh, create the board uh, if we don't give any value for the title and then description like this uh, uh, first we need to run the application npm npm run start then it will come to our postman again and I, I'm going to send this request so now even though I didn't give any value for this title and then this description uh, this board is created without any error so this uh, has to be a problem uh, so that's why I will fix this part using a pipe we are using is not empty decorator so we can see this is not empty decorator here. Check if given value is not empty. So if we have this kind of situation, or uh, didn't give any value for title and description, we want to throw on error. So we can just uh, put this is not empty decorator above title and the description. So we come to our text editor and then inside the DTO here, we give the is not empty like this and even for this description we give the decorator is not empty so I'm going to just uh, uh, create the board again uh, without this value so click the send it's not working yet though because uh, uh, we didn't uh, apply this uh, pipe into our uh, handler so first we come to the uh, controller board controller here uh, when we create the ball in here we use, use pipe and the pipes is this one validation 
pipe. So because we are trying to validate the value that comes from the uh, client, so we put the validation pipe. This is the built-in pipe. So we said there are a lot of built-in pipes in here, like validation pipes and parsing pipe. We want to use the validation pipe. So, so now we try again with no value for title and description. I'm going to send the request. So now we got the error like this. Title should not be empty and description should not be empty and bad request. That's what we wanted to do with this the validation pipe. So thank you for watching this video and see you later. Uh, hello my friend. Uh, today we are going to handle result value uh, if not found when looking for a specific word. So currently when importing specific post by ID, uh, if you try to retrieve a post with an ID that does not exist, the result is returned with no content. But if there is no post, uh, we want to send it to a client with the content that there is no post. So what I just said is, uh, if we come to Postman, uh, when we want to just uh, find the specific the board, so we can use uh, this service method, like get board by ID. When we want to call this method, uh, this one's the uh, handler is this one, give the ID the board ID so if we put any ID uh, definitely there is no board with this ID so if we send something uh, we don't get any error or message as a response but we want to say there is no board with that ID with this ID that's what we want right now so to display an error if post if the post we are looking for is not found, create an exception instance and use it. Uh, that's what we need to do in here. When we are trying to find the board that has the same ID we are looking for, we put that data uh, into this uh, found found object. But inside this object, there is no uh, value. Uh, that means uh, we cannot find any board uh, with the ID that we are looking for. So we will throw on the exception instance. If we have this found, so we can just return this found. So we come to our text editor and inside this service, uh, get board by ID method. We are not going to just return this one. Uh, we will just uh, define this found like this and then uh, if we can get this uh, found we will show an error new not found exception like this and if we have a found we can just return found so if we just uh, send this request again with the ID like Definitely there is no board with this ID, so click it, so we can get this message. Set us code the 404 and the not found message. But if we want to change this uh, message, it is better to give this kind of can find board with ID like that. So to do that, we can just uh, uh, give the tax we want to uh, have for that error. So we can just put the text in here, error message, can find board with ID, and ID, put this ID. So we come to our post band and then click this one again. So now we have a, the better message, like can find board with ID and the ID we give in here as a problem. So thank you for watching this video and see you in our next video. Thank you. Hello, my friend. Uh, today we are going to handle result value
when trying to delete missing board. So previously, when importing a specific board by ID, if a board with an ID that does not exist, we throw an error value for that. So this time, uh, we are going to give an error value uh, even when we try to delete a post that does not exist. So how to implement that? So after checking whether there is a board to be deleted uh, using the already existing method uh, get board by ID, we are going to use this uh, method so we can check the board we want to delete exist or not. So we can check that with this method. So if there is, delete it. And if not, send an error message. That's what we need to do. So it is really easy just so we can put this line above the existing line for the delete board. So if we come to this delete board, we already have this line for that logic, deleting board logic. But we can just put one more line above this one. We can just check that uh, whether the board uh, we want to delete exists or not. So by using this keep board by ID, here const found this get board by ID, and we give the ID that comes from this param, and then by using this found, put this found in here found and ID. So this is what we need to do to uh, throw an error if that board we want to delete does not exist. So thank you for watching this video and see you later. Hello my friend, uh, today we are going to make the custom pipes. So far we've been using the built-in pipes already configured in SKS. Uh, however, other than this, there is a custom pipe that can be created and used separately. So this time we will create and use a custom pipe. So first, how to implement a custom pipe? So first we need to implement the uh, pipes transfer information in our custom pipe. So you can see here, we are trying to implement pipe transform uh, interface in our custom pipe. This the pipe transform interface is the interface that all pipes must implement. And with this, every pipe needs a transfer method. Transfer method. All pipes also need this transfer method. And this method is used by the Next.js to handle arguments. So when we make the custom pipe, we always need this pipe transfer interface and this transfer method. So we want to know this transfer method. So this method takes two parameters, the value and the metadata. The first parameter is the value of the processed argument. And the second parameter is an object, including metadata about the argument. And the value returned from the transfer methods is passed to the route handler. So if an exception occurs, it is sent directly to the client. Even though we read uh, what this first parameter and the second parameter, we actually can make sense. Uh, what these parameters are. So we just try to uh, take a look by using console log for this uh, value and metadata so we can understand what these parameters are. Uh, first, we come to our text editor here and then we make the folder name the pipes and inside this pipes folder, we make the board status and validation pipe ts you can see this name board status validation pipe ts and inside in here you put export class and board status validation pipe implement of pipe transform uh, interface and we also need the transfer method uh, and transfer method takes to a uh, parameter so the first one is the value and the next one is the metadata uh, so we try to know what this value and metadata console log the value console log data data so but we need to put this uh, pipe 
uh, in here as a parameter level pipe and uh, come inside the scrape board uh, we can come inside board controller and we have this handler update board status we can put that board status validation pipe in here and then uh, we try to call this handler uh, with the postman this one's method is the path and the pass is the ID and the status uh, we need to have the existing post and then we need to update that so first we need to uh, update post and description so first we need to create the post board so we created we created the board and then by using this ID we need to update this status public into private so we come in here localhost 3000 board and we need to give the ID in here and inside this the body or we give the status so if I click this send so we just uh, change it this uh, status update it so we come to our text editor so we try to know this uh, value and the metadata so this value is the the private that we gave in here as a status value and the metadata is like a function string and the type is body and data is a status so this is just a meta metadata uh, about this argument about this argument so now this validation pipe need to have a real uh, feature the feature is implementing real function with custom pipe so functions to be implemented uh, because only public and private can come in status uh, if any other value is returned an error will be sent so so for this status so for this status status only the public and private can come in status but if the other value return like right now even though we uh, give the any other value for the status we can still update it uh, this is not what we want if the other value come in here we want to give the error so that's what we want to do so to do that we will use the this source code to make this function first we need to define the status option only the private and we are going to make this function is status valid so when making this function we are going to use the index of method so we put this uh, value uh, in here the value is this one so so this value is not in this uh, board status uh, private or public uh, this index will be minus one but the value we put in here is a uh, public or the private uh, we will have real index like zero or one so this value will be the valid so true or false um this a uh, function will return true or false so if this one is the true uh we will give this a value like just a real value true public or private but if this one is not true so we will just throw this error so this one is the custom pipe we want to make so we come to our text editor uh, we need to make the status option with only and status option board status and public and public and board status private only these two options uh, needs to be in here uh, if the other the value comes in here uh, we need to throw an error so inside this transform value and value 
uh, to upper case because the value if we give the value just the public with small case uh, we need to change this one is into uh, upper case probably uh, because the we define this option uh, inside this model as a upper case so we need we need this one and this one has to be same so upper case and first we need to make the function private is status value and we need to get the status const index this status option index of status uh, if we have this right value in here we will get the uh, real index uh, 0 or 1 but if not we will get the minus 1 so it can be true or false uh, we will return this function will return true or false and if this is status value valid and value and throw new bad request exception and we will give the error message so value isn't in the status options so this is all for the custom validation pipe so now we try to uh, send real requests right now to test that validation pipe a custom pipe so if when we send this to public option for this status uh, first we need to create the board again so because this one is in the memory maybe that already disappear so we need to uh, make the board again and then in here we change that uh, board ID with the new one so yeah update it well but if we put this the uh, uh, random one so if we click the send button so you can see uh, this isn't in the status option so we change it, this one into private yeah this request so we can change this status successfully with this uh, private value so thank you for watching this video and see you later hello my friend today we are going to install postgres sql and the pg admin so so far our uh, memory has been used to store data in order to focus more on learning nested.js functions but from now on we will connect the database like a postgres to the application and store it store the data in the database so we will use postgres as our database so two programs we need to install are the postgres and pg admin pg admin is for a tool to view the database so to install the Postgres on Windows, you can go to this website. For uh, the Mac, you can go to this website. Uh, for the PG Admin, you, both on Windows and Mac, can go to this website, pgadmin.org download. So if you have already installed the uh, Postgres SQL and the PG Admin, first we need to turn on the uh, Postgres SQL to start the database so if you just uh, turn on the Postgres SQL you can see this screen and you can just click this star to start this uh, Postgres SQL uh, and then we need to go to PG admin so I'm going to turn on that so if you come in here so first you get this unlock saved password so please enter your master password you can just enter any password you want to set as a master password for the PG admin. I'm going to type it and then click OK. And then in here we need to create a server first. 
So you can just click add new server or you can just click this is create. So I'm going to create the server and then you can give the name of this server. So for me, just the uh, board and we go to this connection tab for the host uh, name and address. I'm going to type local host and then give the 543 to for port and for username I'm going to give the postgres and for the password I will just type the post to rest and I will just uh, click the save password and then I'm going to click the save button to create the server so you may get this uh, board server here and then in here we can just uh, create the database by click this one and just uh, for me uh, for the database name just uh, I will type board project you, you can just give any name you want to have for this uh, database so I will click this save so now you have a board project database so now we are ready to uh, use the database the Postgres database so in our next video we will we will get to know this type ORM so thank you for watching this video and see you later hello my friend today we are going to make an introduction to type ORM uh, that is object relational mapping first uh, if we see the type ORM what is type ORM so type ORM is an object relational mapper library that runs on Node.js and is written in TypeScript. Type ORM supports multiple databases such as MySQL and Postgres and MariaDB and SQL. Just that it supports so many databases. And now we want to know the what is ORM. So the operation of automatically transforming and linking objects and data in relation in, in relational databases. So development with ORM is flexible for object database transformation. In here, there is object and the relational database. And in here, object, like object-oriented programming, uses class, but the relational database uses table. So if you want to mapping between them, object and relational database, uh, there is a mismatch between the object model and then relational model so try mapping them so we need to use this ORM object relational mapping so this one is object and this one is relational so we need to map them together so if, if you look at here so this one is a type ORM versus a pure JavaScript so when we use the pure JavaScript uh, when we try to select some data from the database uh, we can just do it like this db query and select uh, everything from both where like this but if we just use the type ORM we can just do it like this it is way much simpler than this one so uh, if we look at here type ORM features and benefits so automatically create database table schemas based on the model so if we make the model uh, for the table so the automatically they create the database table schemas and easily injure and update and delete object from the database like this this one is much easier than this one so create mapping between tables so this one is for the relational so we will do it later the one-to-one -on -one -to -one relationship or well, many-to-one relationship like that and provide a simple CLI comments and type ORM is easy to use or ORM framework with simple coding and type ORM integrates easily with other module so in this project we are going to use the type ORM with the Postgres so thank you for watching this video and see you later Hello my friend, today we are going to connect the database to the application. So to do that, there are some modules that we need to install in our application. So first one is the Nest.js type ORM. This one is the module to link to use type ORM in Nest.js. And there is 
and there is also a type RM module and this one is just a type RM module and then PG for the Postgres module uh, so we need to install these three modules so come to our text editor and then turn on the uh, our terminal and npm install nestjs type orm and type orm and pg and save so now we have the module we need for the database installed in our application so we are ready to connect the database to our application so first we need to uh, make the file uh, like for the type ORM configuration we are going to use the type ORM for our database so when we just uh, create the schema or the when we insert the data into the database so we are going to use the type ORM so that's why we need to make type ORM configuration so for that uh, inside the SRC folder we are going to create configs further and then we are going to make the type ORM config TS file inside this Config folder. So we come in here and then so inside this src folder, so we make the file name a uh, folder names configs, and inside this configs, we are going to make the file name type orm config and ts. So so we need to make the type orm configuration here. So if we come in here, type variant configuration file. So in here we can just uh, uh, database information we made uh, in the PG admin four. So we just uh, create this database. At the times so we gave host and then port and username and password. So to connect this database, we actually need to uh, configure that configuration. Uh, in our application, so uh, export or uh, const or uh, type orm config uh, type orm module options, and inside in here we can just uh, write the type for this one. We are going to use the Postgres and then the host for the database is local host and for the port we are using the default port for the uh, postgres 5432 and the username was post to the rest and the password and postgres and database for me i give the board project name like that so for the project and we also need to write down this entity uh, entity is the name you can just type like this uh, entity js or ts so this means uh, if you come in here entity to be loaded for this connection so later we are going to create the entity so inside the entity we are going to give the property like name or description or title or id so by using this entity this database create the table so we need to specify uh, where that entity's files are so we are going to use the TypeScript for that uh, entity file and uh, we will uh, make this path so that's why we uh, specify like this and then we also need to give the synchronize true synchronize true this means uh, you can see here it uh, synchronize in the case if database schema should be auto created on every application launch so be careful with this option and don't use this in production so this schema should be auto created on every application launch so we can actually lose the data inside that database if that is in production mode so inside this production mode we need to make change this one into force but now we are in the development mode 
so that's why I just uh, type this one type the true in here so we are done just uh, creating the config file so to use this config we actually need to uh, connect the database into application so to do that we can put that type or and configuration inside the M module so whatever we use inside Nest.js as an application, that if that is the service or if that is a controller or anything, we actually need to register them inside the module. So we come in the M module in here, inside the import in here, uh, type ORM module for root, then we're going to bring the type rm config we just made if we can do it like this we can use this the type rm we can use the database uh, in our application so thank you for watching this video and see you later hello my friend today we are going to create an entity for a board so why do we need to create an entity uh, let's first look at when we create a database table without the orm so for us the that to be the type rm so we just need to type like that create table board id and title and description so create a table like this or uh, without the rm however when using type rm it is class uh, that is converted to a database table so instead of doing the above create a class and define columns in it so uh, we're going to create the class inside the entity file so if you see here like when we uh, create the board table so we need to give id title description status so in here without the orm we specify like this id title description and but we need to use the class because we are using orm so we first specify the property like id title and we give the column decorator uh, to indicate this one is the column and this ID is a primary key for this uh, board table so we have to specify primary generated column so if you come in here entity the entity decorator class is used to indicate the board class is an entity and this is part of the create table board uh, this entity is this one so this is a part of the create table board this one is uh, same as this part create table board and we can also see primary generated columns the primary generated column decorator class is used to indicate the id column is the primary key column of the board entity this one and the column decorator class is used to represent other columns such as a title description of the board entity so we are going to type this one in our text editor so come to our text editor so first we need to make the entity file inside the board uh, folder here uh, name will be board entity.ts so in here we give the entity the creator first and export and class board and extends base entity and the first property is the not uh, ID that will be the number uh, we will give primary gener generated column and column the creator for the title property string description column status and this one is for the status So now the entity class board is now created. So type ORM automatically creates a table corresponding to the board entity in the database and names it board. So thank you for watching this video and see you later.
Hello my friends, today we are going to create a repository. So first we need to know what is repository. So the repository works with entity object and handles finding, inserting, updating, deleting entities and more. Uh, so inside the repository, we are going to deal with the database related the logic. So usually we did that inside this service, like in here. So, but now we are going to make the repository here and then for the database related thing, we put them inside this repository, not inside this service. So work related to a database can be done in the repository, not in the service. This is also called the repository pattern. So database related work uh, that is uh, insert and find and delete. So first we need to create a repository. So uh, the repository file name is if that is related to board and board repository and TS. So come to our text editor and we make the file name um, board repository and TS. Uh, after that, we need to create a class for the repository in the created file. So we can create the repository class like this. So export class and board repository and uh, extend repository board. Oh, this one is the uh, board entity we just made. And we and here, so extend the repository class when creating. Uh, we also need to extend this repository class so by using this one, uh, we can control entities such as a find, insert, delete. And uh, uh, we also need to put the specific entity here. So we are dealing the board entity inside this board repository. So that's why we need to put that board in here. If you see this entity repository of the creator, uh, this one is used to declare a class as a custom repository. So we are declaring this class is for the uh, repository. A custom store can make it some specific entity or it can be a generic store. So we are going to make this one inside this board repository TS. So we come in here. So entity repository board and export board repository extends repository class and we need to put that board entity here and in order to use the created repository in other places so import it from the board module so to use this repository we also need to register this one inside this the board module. So like this, import type ORM module for feature board repository we just created. This one. So inside the, the board module, import, import uh, type ORM module for feature and Board repository. So now we created the repository. So by using this database uh, from next section, we are going to make the CRUD application. So thank you for watching this video and see you later. Uh, hello, my friend. So far, we've been processing data using local memory but we want to change the local memory into database. So there are some parts inside the source core uh, to be modified uh, for CRUD implementation. So first, we actually need to modify all the logic inside the service and controller files. So if you come to our text editor, so we need to come to the controller and the service part. Uh, we've been just processing these data things uh, by using this local memory so but we are not going to use this one anymore so we need to just uh, you can just delete it or you can just uh, command it and even for this part 
by I'm going to demand or the par here and for the controller I'm also gonna just uh, command the whole part because we need to change the ordering not actually ordering but the database related parts we need to change that so and then the next thing we need to do is uh, since the data is not stored in memory anymore the board array oh we already deleted inside in here this part I just commented it and then the, since we use the entity to define the post data we will delete the board interface in the board model file so if you come in the model file board model so we are not going to use this one anymore or uh, to define the board data because the, we are going to use this board entity to define the board column and the prim primary key so we are not going to use this board interface inside this model pile but we still need to use this board status also we are going to just delete this part and then change this file the board model file or uh, into change this file's name into board status status that or enum ts because this file is for just this board status enum but when we change this file's name so when we import that part like the board status enum automatically changed into this name and but we are not going to just export the board from here because we delete it in here so we need to just delete this part not just in here even inside this controller we are still in import this the board so but we are not going to import it anymore or uh, even for this file's name uh, it is automatically changed uh, and then we just did this uh, number four however since status in a mystery needed to create a file for this part and put it in so I think it is all for the cleaning up the our source code for using the database instead of the local memory so thank you for watching this video and see you later uh, hello my friends today we are going to get a specific board using id so now the data is imported from the database rather than from memory and the repository panel is used when using type ORM so uh, we said uh, about the repository panel so when we get a request from the clients we get the inside from the controller first and then the controller or uh, send that request to the service but that request needs some database related part so we also send that to the repository and then we will deal with the repository thing inside this repository file so that is the repository pattern so we want to use the repository pattern so i will put the board repository in the board service so to use this repository we need to inject this repository inside this service so first we we are going to do that so putting repository in service so that is repository injection so when we uh, try to do repository injection we actually we actually need to do that inside this constructor class but when we just uh, inject this service into controller uh, this part like private board repository is the only thing we need to, we needed to do but, but when we just uh, put this uh, repository inside the service there is one more line that is this inject repository decorator we need to put this line too so this inject repository is uh, using this decorator put this in the board repository variable to say that this service use the repository so it is like de declaring we are going to use this board repository inside this board service so first we are going to our text editor uh, we come to our service board service inside the constructor and then we need the inject repository and which repository we are going to inject that is the board uh, repository and then we are going to use the uh, private and board repository property and board repository and we need the constructor body so we did the repository injection right now 
So now we need to create get ordered by ID method in service because uh, we are trying to get a specific board using ID. But if you come in here, we are trying to we are using this find one method provided by the type ORM. So by using this find one method, uh, we are putting this ID to get a board with the specific ID. But we are using this this uh, board repository, and then we are using this find one method. The reason why we can do like this is, uh, if we come to our repository, we are extending this repository class. We can use the type ORM repository APIs. So that's why we can use it like this. This or that repository and find one method. So we are going to write this part. So get board by ID. Okay, get board by ID. This, this will be really similar to this one. So ID, but ID will be number because the, we define that inside the entity. ID will be just a number. And then this will be promise and board and const found await for the repository and find one method uh, we are going to find the board with id so that's why we are just putting this id here and then if we found that uh, board with that id we put that for specific board's data inside this found and then if we couldn't find that board with that id we need to show new not found exception and can find board with id and id and if we've found that board with that id we are going to return the found and to use this always we also need to write the async in here you know this async it await so this database process is asynchronous so after finishing this process we want to get that result from this database word so that's why we need to put the async it await so we can get uh, if without this async it await uh, we will just uh, get the like the this found will be like uh, like processing like this but if we want to first finish this process and then get that result so we need to put this async it away that's why we also need to put this the promise in here represent the completion of an asynchronous operation so yeah we also need to modify the controller parts as well uh, it won't be much different from uh, from this one you can just uh, copy and paste it like this if you want to and then just uh, comment it out and we are still need the id of from the param and then but the id will be the number type not string anymore and then this one return the promise and type will be the board yeah it's the same so we finish uh, making this feature to get a specific board using ID. So thank you for watching this video and see you later. Hello my friend, uh, this time uh, we will handle the part of creating a board. So first if you see the service part, first we need to the, make the method or name the create board inside this service. So by using this method uh, we are going to uh, save uh, the board inside the database we want to make. First, we get the title and description that comes from the uh, client, and that is also in this create board DTO. And we first need to make the board instance. So, by using this instance, we will just uh, put this one inside the save methods. Uh, first, make the instance, and then we will save the board inside the database. So first we come to our text editor here inside this board service 
I'll make the methods named create port, I'll create port DTO, and then create port DTO. I'll promise and board and const title and description and create board DTO. And first, we need to make the a board instance to save that inside the database to make the board instance we will use the create the method inside this method we will put the title and then description uh, and the status and for the status for the status we always use this uh, default value probably and we don't need to give ID anymore because this one is automatically created and then await uh, this board repository and save and we put this uh, instance and then return board we are going to create. So we also need to uh, write something inside the controller and we come to our the controller here, board controller above this uh, create board. You can also copy and paste it in here and then comment it out. The part we need to change is this one. This will be promise and type board. Uh, this is what we need to change. So now I actually want to create uh, the board by using the postman here we come inside this postman first we need to uh, turn on our application uh, npm run start dev and then we come to our postman again and this will be the post request and then the it will be localhost 3000 and boards we need to put the uh, title and description here. Title and title one and description will be description one. So now I'm going to click this send button to make the board. So this you can see here. So our Board is created with the title one and description description one. So now we are going to look at our database whether this board is really created or not. So come to our PG admin and then inside the board project and we come to schemas and table and after clicking this board we click this button. So if you come in here, so you can see this uh, board named the title one and description description one uh, is created. So we are good for this creating a board. Uh, thank you for watching this video and see you later. Uh, hello my friend, uh, this time uh, we will do with the part that deletes the board. So when deleting the board or any item inside the database so we can use two muscles that is the remove or the delete so if we see the difference between them so if we use the remove method so the unconditionally existing item must be deleted using the remove method otherwise an error will occur so if we use this remove method when we actually don't have that item we want to delete inside the database we can face that error but if we use the delete method or if the item exists inside the database it is deleted and if it does not exist it has no effect so we are not going to get any error or even though that item we want to delete doesn't exist inside this database so because of this difference, if you use remove, you have to use the database twice to delete one item because we don't want to get any error from that. So if we use the remove method, we need to use the database twice 
that is not actually good for the performance. So that's why we are going to use this delete method. So first, uh, if we come to our service, board service, mm -hmm. by using delete method, uh, inside this delete method, we put that uh, ID here because we are going to delete the board with the I specific ID. So first, we come to our the uh, text editor here, and then inside the um, service service here, uh, above this delete board, async uh, delete board ID will be the number and promise, and we are not going to return anything. So we put the void as a type and cause a result and await this board repository and delete id and we are going to print this result by using console log so and then we also need to uh, write something inside the controller and we go to our controller board controller here uh, by copy this part and then paste it and then comment that out. The difference we need to make here is a promise like this. And we need to we also need to give change this one a number. Actually we already have an item inside our database. If you see this PG admin here, I actually want to delete this item. So come to our postman and then by using this delete method and then local host 3000 and boards and we need to uh, give the ID as a param so we put the ID 1 because this uh, item we have inside database ID is the 1 so that's why we need to put the ID 1 here and then and then just uh, we try to delete it by clicking this send mm, now if you come to the database and then refresh it that was uh, removed well and then if we come to our uh, if we see our log uh, we print it by using this one inside this uh, service service uh, we try to print it so that's result is a delete result and affected one so we actually deleted only one item so that's why this affected is one so but if we don't delete anything so right now we try to delete this item again so try to delete it again so I click this one again so we didn't get any response here so but if we see this console log so affected zero so if we didn't delete anything uh, by calling this method so we actually need to do something so to do that so when we didn't delete anything so if wizard and affected affected is zero that means we didn't delete anything new not found exception or can find word with ID ID uh, this is we actually need to do so if we try to delete it again so we don't have this item inside the database anymore so we cannot deal with it so if we click this send so we need to get this message can find board with id1 so that's what we actually wanted so thank you for watching this video and see you later hello my friend all uh, this time we will deal with updating the status of the board so for the board service we need to make the update board status method so first we need to get the specific board uh, we want to update by using this get board by id so by using this method we can get this uh, board object 
uh, inside this bold object, we can get the bold ID and bold uh, title and description and status. But among them, we want to change the status. And then we are going to save the bold that has changed. So come to our text editor. Now inside this bold service, we are going to type the async update bold status ID string uh, ID number and the status will be board status this will be from board entity and const board this board get board by ID we put the ID to get the board data inside the uh, database and then we need to just uh, change we need to change status by using status uh, and we also we forgot to write the await here and and we need to the save the board that has changed await and this board repository save and board and we need to return the board that is updated and we also need to change something inside the board controller and come to our uh, board uh, controller here we are going to copy and paste here and the test test will be same and the param and the body will be same ah, and the id will be the number and the returns type is promise and board okay so we are trying to update the status first we need to uh, create the post to create it uh, we are going to uh, use this title and description again so by clicking this send button we come to our the pg admin and uh, we have this id2 and title title1 one, description1 one, and the status is public right now but i'm going to change this public into private we are going to use the patch request and then localhost 3000 and boards and we need to give the id to and status because the pass is we specify in here id and then id param and status so we need to give the status status key and then private for the uh for the status value we want to change into so if we click this send button so we have the space in here so i need to delete the space so i'm going to click this send again so if we go to our pg admin here i'm you you can see this part the status part i'm going to refresh it i just paused the video and uh, check why this wasn't changed actually this value needs to be changed into the uh private so i try to find it why it hasn't changed so the part i made a mistake was inside this uh, status validation part like the transform uh, we actually need to return the value in here but we didn't return any value in here after transforming so what this is like if we come inside this controller so you can see this uh, validation pipe in here so even though we try to provide this uh, status value as a private but without that the validation is returned uh, inside this controller uh, if I try to the print this uh, status value I try to get the status 
example, if I send this uh, request, and then if I see the uh, log in here, the status is undefined. So after I put the uh, return value in here, like this, if I the, click the send it again and come to our text editor and uh, we can see this private appear in here right now. So that was the problem. So for the data validate type. And then if we come to our uh, database and I try to refresh it and now it has changed into private for the status. So thank you for watching this video and see you later. Oh, hello my friend. Uh, this is the last part for the CRUD fetching or the boards from the database. So it is quite easy compared to other the CRUD part. So just by using this find method, so we are going to get all the boards uh, we have inside the database. And then we also write something inside this controller too. So come to our text editor and uh, inside this board service, we come in here, uh, write the async and get all boards and from miss for and this will be array and return this board repository fine so by using this method we are going to get all the board from the database and then we need to go to the controller and this part we are going to copy and paste and this will be the promise so this is all so we are trying to get all the boards by using the postman get local post, uh, 3000 boards and then click the send button so we have only one item inside a database so, so one item so if we are trying to the uh, a board so here and we are trying to get all boards again so we can see two boards title one like here title one and title two so thank you for watching this video and see you later oh hello my friend uh, from this time on we will implement the authentication function so so far we've done for this only for the board module so inside this board module we can create the board and we can bring the board but we've never done for this authentication. So it's now time for the authentication module. So when we made this uh, uh, board controller and board entity and board service, we spent uh, quite a lot of time because the, we didn't know anything about controller entity and service. But now we knew a little bit about that. So we try to make them us controller, user entity and us service quite quickly this time. So to create the modules on controller and user service, this one, us controller, us service, and user entity like that, uh, we will use the CLI again. So come to our text editor. First, we need to make us module. So nest g module us. So now we created this us module and we want to create us controller. So nest g controller us no spec. And we will just created this us controller. We want this us service created nest g service us no spec. So now it's time to create an entity for a user, this user entity. So the user is required because it is to authenticate the user. So let's create a user entity for user data. So first we need to create a file to write that source code, this one. Uh, first we, inside this uh, uh, us, us folder, we will create a file name uh, user entity and ts. 
in here we need to uh, define the user entity so if you see in here we try to declare this one is entity and we need the ID and username and pass password for this user so we declare this entity and export class user extends our base entity ID number and we also need the username column and this one is string and we need password string and ID is a primary generated column and username is just normal column uh, even for password normal column like this and then we also need to create this repository or uh, user repository so first uh, create the user file user repository file and then write the source code so when we uh, make the repository we always need we always need to extend this repository class and then we need to uh, specify which repository like uh, we need to put this user entity because we are control this user entity inside this repository so come to our text editor and we need to make the file name user repository ts and in here sorry for here like I, it has to be just export not export I'm sorry for that so and uh, we need to keep making repository so entity repository user entity and export or uh, class and user repository and extends a repository class and put the user entity again so we made the repository and we also need to use this user repository anywhere so we need to register this user repository like this inside this us module so import type ORM module for feature user repository we need to register inside the us module here or import type ORM module and for feature and user repository like this and we also need to do repository injection so we made the repository and we want to use the repository inside the also service so we need to inject the repository in the also service so come to our user service also service we want to use that uh, user repository inside the also service so here we inside this constructor we can do dependency injection so inject repository user repository and private and user repository and user repository and we need to put the constructor body we created this one this one this one this one and this one we are quite ready for making the authentication feature so thank you for watching this video and see you later oh hello my friend uh, in this time we will implement the user registration function so sign up feature uh, we are going to use the repository panel so we need to uh, put the user information inside a database when we create the user so we do that part inside the repository that is the repository pattern so when we create the user we need to get the username and password we by using the username and password we are going to make the user instance and by using the user instance we will put it inside the save method so we can save that user inside the database so we go to user repository first here or uh, async and create user us 
to read ensure DTO and us to read ensure DTO. But actually, we didn't make the us question for DTO yet. So first, we are going to uh, make that DTO. So us to read ensures DTO and TS. So here we need to define that DTO also to read ensures DTO and this one username string and uh, password and string. Uh, we will also put some validation condition in here later. So we need to bring it again also credential DTO again. This one's a little will be promise and void and const. We need the username and password as credential and const user or uh, discrete and by using the username and password. Uh, by using the user instance, we will uh, save that, save and user. So now we can uh, make the user. And we also need to uh, bring this one inside the service. So we try to do that inside this repository. We need to bring it uh, from the service and we also need to bring it up from controller again. So first, uh, we need to go to this uh, service, user service, user service, maybe also service, also service here, async sign up, us credential detail, and us credential detail, and promise, and void, and return, and this user repository, and create user and us credential uh, we also need to go to the us controller us controller here and to use this uh service inside the controller we also need to do the dependency injection for this uh, service inside this controller to do that like constructor and private and us ser service and us service like this and uh, post and when we sign up we need to use this uh, post request and sign up a body and us to read and shares and us credential detail and promise void and return this us service and sign up and us credential detail so uh, we need to bring the body again body like this oh the, now we also need to put this one so okay so now we can create a uh, user so we can go to postman and try to uh, create the user by local post 3000 and us and sign up and then we need to give this uh, username and password here username and username is username1 and then password is a password1 like this so first we need to turn on our application npm launch star dev and I'm going to click this send button so we go to our pg admin and here I'm going to refresh it and you can see this user table appear and then I'm going to click this button and you can see username1 and password1 appear. So thank you for watching this 
video and see you later. Hello my friend, uh, in this time uh, we are going to do the user data validation. So when creating a user, we will put some condition uh, for each column so that we can check validity such as the desired name length and the password length. So when we do the validation, we will use this uh, create validator module. We already used it when we make the board detail. So even for user detail, we are also going to use this class validator. So to do to put some conditions for this detail, so we can use it like this. Or well, if we want this username to be string, we can put this is string decorator. If we want this username character to be uh, less than four characters, so we can just put this min length. And if we want to use the regular expression, we can just put regular expression inside this match decorator. So if we come to uh, our DTO here, uh, DTO here, we can put that decorator. Uh, if we want this to be the string, this username, and if we want this user character's length becomes uh, longer than four characters, min length, four and max length is 20, and is string, uh, and, and same as above here. Right, and then one more matches. Only the English character and numbers are allowed for this password. So do it like this A to Z and A to Z and 1 to 9, 0 to 9. And we can just do it like this. And we also need to put this validation pipe. So when a request comes into a handler in the controller, or we need to put a validation pipe to check it according to the validity condition in the detail. So we want to put this validation pipe here as controller and inside this uh, body. So validation pipe. So you know this one is built in uh, pipes, right? And so we need to try it uh, by using the postman. So this character's length uh, needs to be less than, uh, longer than four characters, but if we have just three characters, so I'm going to send it. So you can see here, username must be longer than or equal to four characters. So it has a bad request. So if I add one more character here, so now we don't get any error as a response. So that means this validation pipe is working well. So thank you for watching this video and see you later. Hello my friend, uh, we are going to give our username a unique value. So in this time, uh, when creating a user, we will implement a function that send an error if we try to use a username whose username is already used. So uh, if we see our database, we already have a user. Username is just username one. But if we try to create the user with username one again, uh, nothing actually happened. But we actually don't have this to be allowed because the username one is already inside the database. So this username is same. So it doesn't have to be like this. We need to uh, occur the error. So there are two ways to implement this feature. So the first feature is the in the repository, use the find one method to check if there is a already an ID with the same username. And if not, to save the data. However, this method requires processing the database twice. But this is not actually good because we want to process the database once. So we are going with the second way. If you see here at the database level, if there is a user with the same na name, it throws an error. So to implement in 
this second way, uh, we can just uh, put only this unique decorator uh, inside this uh, user entity. It is way easier way. So if we come to our entity, like user entity, uh, we can just put this unique uh, decorator and then put the uh, uh, any column you want it to be uh, unique. For now, we only username to be unique, so we put the user name in here. We don't want this password to be unique, so we are not going to do it like that. So we are trying it. We are trying to put this username again. Click it. So now we got the internal server error. So it works well because the we already have a username one inside the database. So this unique or decorator works really well. But if you see this one, we can we are getting this internal server error and status code is just a 500. Oh, uh, this is not actually idea because uh, when we try to make a user, uh, if that username is already exist, it is better to say like this username already exist. So you need to change. You need to use the different username, or uh, rather than just the same internal server error. So the reason why we get the internal server error is we didn't uh, put the try catch statement. So so first we need to uh, go to the user repository. So when we try to save the user, we need to do that inside the try catch statement. So and if this one has an error, we will print this error in here inside this catch part. So we are trying to that print that error in here error. So I'm going to just uh, send it again like this when we print this error you can see this error code is a 23505 so this means when uh, the username already exists inside database like if error code uh, this means throw new or conflict exception and existing username and if not there will be just a throw new or uh, internal server error so if we try to uh, uh, make the user with username one again so now we can have a better message existing name username as we or type into your existing username. So thank you for watching this video and see you later. Oh, hello my friend. Oh, today we are going to encrypt our passwords. So at this time, when we create a user, the current password is stored in the base, in the database as it is. So if we see our database, just the, this one is just a plain uh, password. This one is not actually ideal because anyone can see their password. This needs to be decrypted. So uh, we will implement the part that encrypt the password and store it. Uh, so to encrypt the password, we are going to use the bcrypt.js module. So we are going to install that first. So npm install bcrypt.js and save. So after installing this module, we want to know how to store password in database. So there are many ways to store the password. So first way is just to save the original password. When we uh, type the 1234, we can just put this 1234 inside the database as we did so far like this, just password one. But this one is the worst case. We actually don't have to do like that. The second way is we just encrypt the password with encryption key. Like this one is a two way. Like we can actually encrypt the password and then we can decrypt it. 
and when we encrypt it we need to use the encryption algorithm and encryption key so if we come in this website uh, we want to text to encrypt one two three four we want to encrypt it we get this encrypted text and we also want to decrypt this encrypted text to this one two three four so we can encrypt it and decrypt it so this one is two way but when the encryption key is exposed the risk is high because the algorithm is mostly open so this one is not that idea because this encryption key is exposed yeah you can see you can actually decrypt it really easily so the next way is uh, we can hash the password uh, but when we hash it uh, this one is a unidirectional so it's not two-way like that if we hash it we cannot decrypt it so if you come in this website I'm trying to hash the one two three four so I get this one but I cannot uh, decrypt this one into the one two three four so this one is quite different from this above one and this one uh, looks uh, way safer than this one but this one also has a problem uh, there is a rainbow table so if we see this what is this rainbow table a rainbow table is like the big data table like um, there are some password many people use like the one two three four or let me in or just any easy password so this one becomes a key and this one becomes a value so they put so many just popular password inside a database and that becomes a rainbow table so they can just compare it so like a user password is one two three four and this one so has to value is this one and but B user's password is also one two three four, and that one's hash the value is the same as that. So this one is not that secure either. So how can we um solve this problem? Uh, at this time we can use this sort. Uh, that means when encrypted, sort is added to the original password and then encrypted with a hash. So uh this one is a we are still trying to hash it but we put the sort like a sort is a unique text so when we try to one two three four but after that we can just put any sort but this sort needs to be the unique so it is like like that a user or get this value so we can store this one inside database and even the b person has the same uh, password one two three four but the sort value will be the different like that so this one is different so it is way better way to uh, store the password inside the database but if we want to use this way easily we can make this bcrypt.js so that's why we are using bcrypt.js so by using bcrypt.js you can see this source code First, we are going to generate the sort. A sort needs to be unique. So sort, we need to generate the sort here. And then uh, using the sort and plain password, we are going to hash them. So we can get this hashed password. We put the plain password and the sort together. And then we are going to get the hashed password. And we put this hash password or inside the database so if we come to our user repository repository or uh, when we also get the password here and we first need to import the uh, bcrypt.js from the bcrypt.js const salt and away of bcrypt and gen generate salt and const hash sheet password and await of bcrypt and hash and password and uh, salt 
and we need to put this hashed password in here so now we are trying to uh, create the user again so, so we need to change this username into username 3 and try to send it uh, first we need to run our application again npm run star dev and then click this send again so we come to our database and refresh it so you can see this is hashed password so thanks for watching this video and see you later oh hello my friend oh today we are going to implement the login feature so so far we've just uh, made a sign up feature so now it's time to do for this sign up a uh, sign in so sign in is way easier than sign up we are not going to do the encrypt the password like that just so we can uh, find the username inside the database if there is a user we want to log in we need to just uh, compare the password or uh, the password that we give from the client and the uh, or uh, the password that is inside the database or uh, if that is correct so we can just log in that's what's going on inside this service so when we compare the password we are going to use the bitcrypt uh, module again so come to our text editor and then our uh, user also service also service in here anything and sign in and us credential detail and us credential detail and promise and string and const username and password and us credential detail and const user and await this user repository and find one find one with username if we found that user we will uh, try to compare the password but well, first we need to import the uh, bitcrypt bitcrypt to compare we need to put the plain password that comes from the client and then user password that is inside the database and then if that password is correct so we will log in success or uh, if not the password is incorrect through new on a solace exception a login fail and we also need to go to controller uh, controller us controller and we need to make that handler a uh, post a uh, sign in and uh, sign in body a uh, validation pipe and us credential and us credentials detail and promise and boy a string return on uh, this us service and sign in and put the us credential detail so we are going to test it so we need to use this post request and localhost 3000 and us and sign in and we need to give the username and password but i'm going to just bring this one username and password so here so we are trying to uh, log in with username 31 and password one so yeah, we got the login success response but if we change the password password too so we can see login fail so thank you for watching this video and see you later hello my friend uh, today we are going to talk about the 
JWT module. So this time, uh, when you log in, you need to generate a token for the logged in unique user. So to generate the token, a module called JWT is used. So take a look at the JWT module. So first we want to know what is JWT. So JWT is JSON Web Token. So JSON Web Token is an open standard that defines a compact and independent method for securely transporting information between parties as JSON objects. This information is digitally signed so it can be verified and trusted. To put it simply, uh, it is a useful module to use when delivering information safely or to check user privileges. So if you see this token uh, made by this JWT module, so this red part is the header. Header contains the metadata about the token, like the type, hashing algorithm, and this second part is the payroll. So you can put any data, but that doesn't have to be like sensitive because anyone can see this. Anyone can see this payroll. So usually people put the user information and the expiration time and subject. And this last segment is the verify signature. The last segment of the JWT is the signature used to verify that token was signed by sender and has not been altered in any way. Signatures are generated using header and payload segments, a signature algorithm and a secret or public key. So by using this payload and uh, uh, this header and payload, we, are, we can make this uh, verified signature. So by using this part, uh, we, can, we can verify this uh, token is valid or not. So this one is the important part. So we want to know the JWT usage flow. So when user log in, if the user log in is successful, we need to create a token. So when we create a token, we need to use the payload and the secret text. You can um, use any secret text you want to. So by combine them, and when we combine them, we need to use hashing algorithm. So we will make this token. So after making it, we need to put that token inside the token storage. It can be a uh, local storage on cookie or any, any part if we can uh, store it. So uh, when the user and when client send a request to the server, like when on user, admin user wants to see a post that only admin can see. Uh, this is about the authorization. So when sending a request, uh, put that store token in the header and send it together. Just when make a request to server, we also put the token inside that request. So the server uses JWT to generate the token and compares to two. So I said this part is for the verifying this token is right or not. So first, by using this part, by using this part inside this server, we need to verify that token is right or not. And then uh, by using this uh, payload, inside this payload, we get this username. So by using this username, we can find out this user is an admin or not. So this user is admin, we can let this admin user to see that post. Or uh, if not, we need to occur the error. So this one is a process of a compar comparison, like the how we can verify this token is valid or not. So if this server get this token, uh, server uh, put this part in here, and then server also try to uh, generate this part by combining this header and the payload. So if this one and this one is same, uh, it means it is valid. But if this generated uh, valid part signature part is the different from this one that means uh, this token is not valid so we need to occur the error that's what is about the JWT so thank you for watching this video and see you later oh, hello my friend 
uh, we are going to generate token using JWT. Uh, in this time, we will create a token using the JWT module we learned last time. Uh, however, we will also use a module called Passport uh, because this module makes the process of authentication and authorization much easier. So we can only just use the JWT, but we want to make this process much easier. So we need the Passport. So there are a lot of modules we actually need to install. So that is NestJS JWT, NestJS Passport and Passport and Passport JWT. So we come to our text editor, npm install uh, NestJS JWT and NestJS Passport and Passport and Passport JWT and save. Uh, after inserting them, and uh, we actually need to register JWT module in our application. We want to use this JWT module inside our application. So when we want to use it, we always need to register them inside a module. So we put it that inside the OS awesome module. OS awesome module. We are going to put the uh, J. WT module and register and we put this secret and uh, secret one two three four you can just put any text this one is uh for this part when we make the token we need the secret tag that uh, this one is this one and we also need sign options and expires in this one is a uh, this one means uh, this token is only valid in one hour or uh, you can just uh, give any value any time in here so if you come in here so secret this secret or uh, secret text used to create tokens you can enter any text and expires in expires in token become invalid after a set of period of time 60 multiply 60 means that this token will no longer be valid after one hour. So we also want to register the passport module in the application. So we also need the JWT module and also passport module. So and when we register this passport module, uh, we also need to specify the deport strategy. So as a deport strategy, we are going to use JWT. So we are we need to put this JWT in here. So come to our uh, us module here, uh, passport module, and register uh, deport strategy JWT. So now we can use passport and JWT both inside our application. And now it's time to generate token using JWT when load when login is successful. So come inside our uh, us service. Here, when we when our login is successful, we need to create a token in here. Create token here. We actually need to use the JWT service JWT module. So to do that inside this service. So we need to do injection for that JWT. To do that, private and JWT service and JWT service. JWT service comes from this uh, JWT module. We need to create a access token, await this JWT service and sign. And we actually need to put the user name here. Uh, as a payload so when we create the token we can put username and role or any other things in here and we combine them together to make the token but for me I'm just I'm only gonna just put username in here username but it is better to just define like this payload just a username like this it is way better and then put this payload Here. And when we 
use this same method this one use this secret so we are going to return this access token and we need to change this uh, return type will be the access token and this will be string and we also need to uh, we need to put that this one here uh, we also need to change something inside this controller because we changed this method inside the service we also need to go to controller you can see this error this one because of this uh, return type this one is assess token and string so now we can try to uh, sign in uh, sign in and then we will see whether we are uh, first uh, we need to run the application and then we are going to sign in again login fail on uh, slides maybe because of the password oh now we can you can see this access token we can create the token when the login is successful so thank you for watching this video and see you later uh, hello my friend uh, today we are going to get user information after token authentication using passport and jwt so if you come in here uh, i'm going to talk while looking at this diagram so first when we uh, try to log in here i am user want to say hello and if that login is successful server generate token that include the user information because the inside the payroll i put the username so so after that after creating that token we are going to send that token back to client so when inside the response we put the token in here so after getting that token inside this client we save that token in the cookie or local storage and then uh, when the client make the request again to the server a new request with token again so that inside that request uh, we will have that token so that server decode the token and so server knows the user information so so far we've done up to this part four so now it's time to do part five and six so what we need to do now are part five and part six so when sending a request with token server checks whether the token is valid or not and if it is if that is valid so it checks whether the user is in the database because we put the username in the payroll so we can check that user is in, in the database or not using the username in the payroll if there is a user the user object is fetched from the database uh, if the user does not exist an error is sent so this part 5 and 6 i magnify them in here client send the request to the server and inside the request uh, we put the payload and token in here so by using this payload we fetch that uh, user object from the database so this five or six part if we see that as a code source code it will be like that and this part is for checking that token is valid or not and if that token is valid we will get the user object in here so if you see this injectable so DSJS can inject it anywhere this service is needed via its dependency injection system so by putting this injectable decorator you can use this JWT strategy anywhere and when we uh, create this JWT strategy we actually need to extend the passport strategy so inside this passport strategy we can make this JWT strategy and we also need to inject this user repository uh, because we need to get the user object in here if this token is valid so inside this support we need to put this secret or key or uh, we can ask uh, why we need to put the secret or uh, text again because we already put that 
secret tabs inside the OS module. OS module in here we put it already, but why do we need to put it here? But this one is for the making the uh, creating the gen uh, creating the token, but this one is for the validating like the checking that uh, token is valid or not. So the purpose is different. And JWT from request. This means uh, we can find the token inside this a uh, header. This header, header as a bailer token. So we actually need to specify it. JWT from request. And in here, uh, if this one is valid, the token is valid. We are going to get the user object uh, from the uh, user table. So we put this uh, payroll and username like that. So we go to our text editor and we need to make the file name JWT strategy JWT to red to G and TS. And we need to put the source code here first inject table decorator and export a uh, class J JWT to red C or uh, extends and pass port strategy and we need to put the strategy but this strategy is not from the passport this one is from the passport JWT because we are using JWT strategy so you need to change it on from this passport to passport JWT so we also need to inject the repository inside the constructor or uh, inject repository uh, this one is a user repository because we need to uh, control the user entity so private and user repository user repository and inside the uh, constructor body we need to specify support uh, secret or key is a secret one two three four this one needs to be same as the one you define inside this OS module and JWT from request uh, extract JWT and from us as a bailer token and if that token is valid we need to uh bring the user object in here and in here we can get the payroll uh, that is the username for us const username payroll and const user and user entity and await this user repository and find one and put this username to find the user uh, if user is not there and show new on a solo site user and if we have user we need to return the user so now inside our re request we can get the user object so by using that user object we can do like authentication and authorization so that is really well but there is a more thing to do. Uh, that is the uh, we actually need to register JWT strategy uh, inside the JWT strategy we just created. This one we want to use this one inside us module and then uh, board module in and any other module or uh, inside our application. So we need to go to so if you see here uh, provider we need to put JWT strategy and even inside the export we put JWT strategy uh, this means we want to use this module uh, inside the different module not just inside the us module so we put that uh, us module here uh, inside the provider we put JWT strategy and even for export uh, passport module and JWT strategy. 
so now we can use JW strategy in any place in any module so so now 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 we can get user request inside request object so we will test it so we are going to make the one more just handler in here for the test so name will be the post and uh, the pass will be just uh, test and handler's name will be us test and then we can get the request object like this and the request so console look and request and request so we are going to call this uh, controller so inside the postman so post and local post and 3000 and us and us test so I'm going to call it oh this uh, what was not us test it's just just test so I have to call it again so if we come in here you can see this or user object like this but we cannot find any I just a request that we can find just request object but we cannot find any user object even though uh, we are returning this user object in here we cannot get any user object inside the request object so how can you get it so we can use this user guard so maybe you are confusing there are a lot of like a middleware inside the nest.js so that's why it makes you confused so nest.js has a several middlewares there are things that are treated as middleware such as pipes pipes and filter and guards and interceptor and each has a different purpose and is used like a pipe is for the data transforming and the validation and filter has its own purpose and if you see this guard, guard is an authentication middleware it tells the server who can and who is not allowed to transport who, who is not transport or given pass like this is for authentication so we are dealing with the authentication so now we need to use this use guard so so we can just put use guard and also guard oscar like this we will try it with that uh, inside this control controller that uh, we put this use guard and also guard also guard is from the that comes from the passport we are using the passport so that's why we need to put this also guard so we are going to send this request again or oh, you see this unauthorized that means that authentication work is working right now so we need to use a token to call this request so first uh, i'm going to uh, sign in here uh, i got the this token i need to put this token inside the header so header as a bearer token so we define it like this inside they delete from request from us header as a bearer token so header as a bearer token so we need to put the token in here so i put it and then i'm going to send it again so now we are not going to see that unauthorized error but and we also see this uh log we printed in here this request inside this request object we can see this user object id username and password so thank you for watching this video and see you later oh hello my friend today we are going to create custom decorator we actually never used the custom decorator so far so we are going to make this very simple custom decorator uh, that feature is to return the user object this user object so in our last video we already just returned this user object but when we return the user object we need it to be the like request and user like this if we do it like that we can return it but it is also good to make the custom decorator 
just to get only this user object. So how can we do that? So we can just use it like that. We we use create param the creator. So uh, to get this request object, we will get this uh, context that comes from create param the creator and then switch to HTTP and get request. So inside this request object, we can see this one. So if we return request and user, we will only get this user object. So come to our uh, text editor and we will make the file name get user decorator and ts and in here export and const get user and create param decorator and data for first parameter and then contacts so first request and contacts and switch to http and uh, get request and we will return a request and user so we, we will try to use this get user custom decorator uh, when we just uh, that use in here that using custom get user decorator so user decorator and user and put the user in here so I'm going to send the request to this handler so do it and then we see you can see this one we can only see this user object in here so we made this custom decorator way yeah thank you for watching this video and see you later uh, hello my friend uh, today we are going to allow we are going to make a feature to allow only authenticated user to view and write posts so so far uh, anyone can view the boards and anyone can create the board so but that is not actually ideal we need to authenticate user for creating and viewing the board so that is what we are going to do today so giving user access to posts so import the authentication module from the board module as the module related to authentication must be usable in the board module so for the authentication we are dealing that only inside the us module but we want to use that us module inside this board module so we need to import it or uh, this us module inside the board module so come to our uh, board module here we need to import the awesome module inside this board module and we need to use the use guard and as a guard to grant access to the post after seeing if this person makes the request with the correct token when making the request so we use that use guard inside this here like when we are calling this us test handler so we need this use guard and us guard for this board module so if we go to board controller we can put that us guard and use guard like this so this one apply only this handler but we want all handler here or uh, to be applied so we can put this one above this class board controller class so so we are trying to call this get all board without the token first uh, local host this 3000 and boards I'm going to send it but you can see this on a solo dice now this is because we don't have a token inside the value token here we first need to uh, sign in and we need to get the token and we need to put that inside this token here send it yeah we can get all the posts that is inside a database so thank you for watching this video and see you later oh, hello my friend uh, today we are going to create a relationship between users and board 
So currently, when creating a user or board, there is nothing said about the relationship between the two. So when creating a board, uh, we must also include information about which user created that board. So we will handle the relationship between this user and the board. So first, a formation of relationship between users and board data. So to form a relationship, we need to put field in entity like this. Uh, inside this user entity, we need to put that board's field uh, to form a relationship between user and board. And inside this board entity, we need to put this user uh, to form a relationship between user and board. So if we see this relationship user and the board, uh, from the user user perspective, this one is a one-to-many relationship. Because if you see this one-to-many relationship explanation, so one-to-many relationship allow creating the type of relation where entity one, entity one can have multiple instances of entity two. So entity one, this user can have multiple instances of entity two board. User can have a lot of uh, board in instances, but the entity two has only one entity. So, but this board uh, has only one user. And if you see here, uh, many to one relations. Uh, from this uh, board perspective, uh, this relationship is many to one relationship. So, a many to one relations allow creating the type of relations where entity one can have a single instance of entity two. So, now this one becomes entity one and this one is entity two. And, but the entity 2 can have the multiple instances of entity 1. So entity 1 is the owner of the relationship and store the ID of entity 2 on its side of the relations. So from the user, uh, this relationship is one to many. So we need to put this board and above the board, uh, we need to put this one to many of the creator. So and we also need to put the three uh, parameter here. So first one is the type, type of that column. So that is the board. And the second parameter is inverse size. Uh, to assess as a user on the board, you need to assess as a board ad. So inside this board, if you want to assess this user, you can just assess board, a board, and user and the last parameter is option then we can give the eager or uh, true and if eager is true the board is also fetched when user information is fetched so if this one this one is the true this eager is true when we get this user information we also try to get this board information inside this user and now we are going to our text editor and put that relationship inside the entities. So first we go to the user entity here. Or we can put the uh, one to many relationship. And then we need to say boards. And this one's uh, type is a uh, board. And this one will be array because Lots of boards inside in here, not just one board. And we need to put the three arguments in here. First one is a uh, type. Type is a board. And the second one is a board. How we can assess this user uh, inside the board entity. That is the board and user. Uh, this one has error right now because uh, inside the board entity we didn't specify the user column so that's why we get the error right now and then we also give the eager true to get the board data when we are uh, trying to fetch this user uh, data so we also need to go to the uh, board entity and in here we need to put the uh, many to 
one relationship. This one is the user and type is the user entity and we need to give the type is a user entity and uh, oh, we need to assess the pool from the user so we can put the user and then pools because uh, we specify pools inside the user so user and pool we can assess uh, this pool uh, from the user this one is uh, this one is inverse side and uh, we also eager force so this is if for the forming a, a relationship between the user and poor so by using this relationship we are going to make some authorization from now on so thank you for watching this video and see you later Hello my friend, uh, today we are going to enter user information when creating a board. So the relationship between users and boards was formed using entities. So now when we actually create a board, we will put user information into the board. So first we need to request to uh, create a board and user information as a token in the header and creating a board by forming a relationship between user and information and boards. So if you see here in the controller, so this one is a board controller. Uh, we didn't put the user information uh, in here, but now we need to put the user information together because when creating a board, we also need to put the user information together. So that's why we also need to put the user information. User information already is uh, stored inside the request objects, so we can uh, fetch that user objects inside the request object. So we can first go to the text editor in here and come to the board controller uh, when creating a user. So this one, when creating a user, we didn't put the user information here. But now we need to, so in here, we bring the, we made the 
get user parameter by using this parameter like this and get the user information here this type is a user entity and we put this user in here together so uh, we need to go to the hold service here and we get the user2 in here user and when we make this a board or instance we also need to put the user information too like this so now we are trying to create the board so we will see whether the user information is stored well inside this the board table so first we go to the uh, postman so we will create a board but first we need to log in so we need to get the token so by using the token we can actually uh, create it so because uh, we have the authentication process by putting this if you come in here for its controller you can see it use guard and us guard so because of this uh, we need to get through the authentication process so come to the login and yeah we get this token and uh, we put this token when creating the uh, boards so inside in here value token and put it in and then we use we are going to use the title one and description one and create trying to create it and uh, yeah we create it and then we come to the post uh, pg admin and inside the board table and you can see the user id and a user ID 7 user it create this title so it is good so now we make sure the user information uh, was stored inside this board table too so thank you for watching this video and see you later uh, hello my friend uh, today we are going to edit the board uh, so far anyone can actually edit any board so without taking care of uh, authentication uh, we can just uh, edit the board if we want to uh, but it is not ideal actually only the person who created that board can edit the board that is right so um, when we just uh, update the board status we still need the user object so by using the user object we need to find out whether this user who are trying to update this board is authenticated or not so we need to use this get user decorator to get the user object in here so when we update the board we also put this user object in here so when we update the board in here we use this get board by id but when we use this get board by id method we put the user object here too originally we just put this uh, board's id but we need to put the user id here too so by using this user id inside this get board by id method when we find the board object inside the database we make a one more condition uh, with this user id we are going to find the board only this specific user made so if this user didn't create this board we cannot get this board object so we will get this can find board with id so that means we cannot edit that specific board so only the user uh, who created that board can edit that board so first we go to the text editor so if we come in here this is for this uh, updating the board so inside this handler well, we need to get the uh, user object so by using the get user the creator we will get the user and user type and we put this user object inside in here too and we go to this method update board status so when we use this get board by id uh, we only put this id so far but we also need to put this user so user here so when we try to get this board by id we also need to uh, use this user condition uh, in here not just defined by 
or board ID, we also put this user ID to uh, where ID and user ID is user uh, user that comes from here user this one is like ID and ID you know that but uh, inside the ES6 we can omit that part so we put this user here and then ID so uh, we want to find this board uh, with this board ID and this user ID so only the user who created this board uh, can get this uh, board object inside here found so that's it uh, this is all we need to do uh, to change that authentication part only the authenticated user can update that status uh, but if you come to this board controller or uh, inside it, this get board by ID you can see this error um to to solve this problem we need to put this user object here too to do that we need to get the user object by using the uh, get user and user user okay that's it so thank you for watching this video and see you later uh, hello my friend uh, this time uh, we are going to implement a function that allows you to delete only the boards you have created so so far anyone can uh, delete any board so that makes a problem so only the authenticated user mm, maybe more than that just only the user who have created the board can delete the board so that's better so when we delete the board in here uh, by using get user decorator we will get user object and when we use this delete board method we put this user to get user object in here so when we use this delete method to delete that specific board uh, with the id we put this user id too not only just the uh, board id so that's what we need to do so go to our text editor and in here so inside this delete board handler we use the get user decorator and then we bring the uh, user object here and we put this user uh, as a second parameter for the delete board uh, method and so go to the uh, board service uh, we will get the user and then when we uh, delete the board uh, not only just to use this id so board id we also put this user information in here so now by doing like this only the user who created this board can delete the board so that's it so if we tried it uh, by using the postman so first we are going to create a new board but first to create the board we need to sign in so i'm going to use username 3 and password 1 so i'm going to uh, first i need to run the server npm run start debut so come back to the postman and i'm going to click this one again so i got the uh, access token after successfully the logged in and I'm going to create the board here uh, board a title 4 and description 4 and when we just uh, make it we also need to put the token here as a barrel token so I'm going to click this send button so now uh, we create this board title 4 and description 4 so I'm going I'm trying to just uh, delete this board so using this method and then local host of 5000 and and if you see the path inside the controller uh, we need to give the uh, board id 
here. So we know the board's ID is ID 5. So we need to put the 5 in here uh, without the token right now. So I'm to trying to delete it. So uh, I, I think the port is the 3000. I'm sorry about that. So I'm going to uh, send it again. So you can see this message unauthorized. So that means only the created user or uh, the person who created this board uh, can this delete this board. So we need to put that uh, token in here. I'm going to bring the token again in here. I'll put it in here and then try to delete again. So now you can see uh, nothing in here that means uh, it is deleted well. So thank you for watching this video. And I think uh, it's all for the Nest.js course. So I hope you learn a lot about the Nest.js. So if you have some question, you can just leave the comment below. So thank you for watching this video and see you later.